Where are we at, Houston? Thank you. When you experience a sports injury, muscle, or joint pain, you want treatment right away. Parkview Ortho Express provides same-day orthopedic and sports injury care without referral or appointment, offering diagnostics, x-rays, the region's only body composition DEXA scan right inside of the Sport 1 Parkview Fieldhouse. Walk in Monday through Thursday, 7 to 7, Friday, 7 to 5, and Saturday, 8 to noon. For more information, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash ortho express. It's the comments. Comments falling from the sky. 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 Comments falling from This is the first time I've been able to do this kind of more uh, complete understanding or view of your body. One of the things that's really important about this is that it's kind of legitimizing us as athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Concussions, they're a concern for parents of athletes in any sport. That's why Parkview Sports Medicine is leading the way with the area's first concussion clinic. Our integrated sports medicine team utilizes an innovative, evidence-based approach to manage athletic-related head injuries in those 14 and older, providing comprehensive care to get the athlete you love safely back in play. To schedule an appointment, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 266-4007. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne mad ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's a... to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ant in action. Get mad about blue. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far. So they're setting you up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing, and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education, but also the experience. Parkview Sports Medicine, especially since I've been a pro, has been a place where my game has really been able to develop in multiple facets. Injury prevention, maintenance, physical therapy, weightlifting, agility work, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to have an NBA body. This is the place for me to go when I come back home and I need to get a workout in. Always welcome me back with open arms. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Both runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana and beyond. Support Summit City Sports, become a sponsor, join our winning team today.
Thank you. Good evening, football fans, and welcome to SAC Football here on Redeemer Radio. Tonight, we're broadcasting live from Lures Field as the Homestead Spartans come in to take on the Bishop Lures uh, Knights here in early SAC action. Before we begin this broadcast, let's send it back to the station for an opening prayer. Thank you very much, Father, for the opening prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lures Field here. Sean McBride joined by Matt Geely up here in the booth on the sidelines tonight. We've got Nick Gray and our sideline reporter, Mr. Eric Pete, getting ready for the national anthem to uh, to be sung here. And we're going to go live down to the field where a group of fine uh, Lures students are preparing for the singing of Old Glory. But uh, until that time, uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, keep an eye on that. It looks like we're getting ready to go. All right, maybe we're not, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to – do I do I introduce Matt or do I go down to the field with Nick's microphone is the question. So uh, we're going to find out here momentarily when we're going to uh, kick things off here. Looks like we're waiting for a football player there, Sean. Looks okay. like we're going to be ready now. Gotcha. All right. So it sounds like we're waiting for the PA a guy to announce the national anthem, and then we'll be ready to go. Um, and before we do that, let's go ahead and, and thank our game sponsor tonight. Uh, obviously, Preferred Automotive Group with two state-of-the-art service centers. When you want to buy a car the preferred way, come to Preferred Auto Group. Preferred Auto, our game sponsor tonight. Very special thanks to Jay Leonard and his crew over at Preferred Auto for sponsoring tonight's game. Matt, while we uh, get things arranged here, let's talk a little bit about this matchup. Obviously, Homestead coming into the contest undefeated. Big win late in the game last week. Um, and Lures, we're going to give you a chance to talk about that after the National Anthem. <laughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please have a listen as we uh, begin the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous Bishop Lewis, seniors from the show choir, amazing job. Back up to you. 
We are getting ready to kick off the SAC football action, week three action. It is the Bishop Lewers Knights hosting the Homestead Spartans. Matt Geely along with Sean McBride here. Matt, let's talk about the tail of the tape. Both of these squads coming in, expecting a victory tonight. Uh, do you see keys for victory for both of these squads? What's, yeah. what's your, your gut telling you here? Yeah, Sean, starting with Homestead, it's big on the road. Get out to a fast start. Get the momentum early on. Take this crowd out of it for the Knights and keep that going throughout the entire game. The other side for Lures. It's a big week, one and one. It's kind of decisive week. Talked to some coaches before the game. They said some adjectives to describe practice were productive and worthwhile, and they were crisp this week. So if they can take care of the little things, clean up the special teams, clean up the form tackling, they have a great chance here to come out with a victory and move to two and one. Fantastic. We're going to go ahead and set things down to the sidelines here where our sideline reporter, Eric Pete, has an update on the field conditions as well as the coin toss. Eric, what do you have for us? Hey, Sean. Great to be here once again. The field. As you might imagine, you might remember the monsoon two weeks ago. And uh, just two weeks later, this field is in great condition apart from a few dry spots here and there. Uh, but the grass is thick and luscious. Uh, it's mowed a little bit shorter than it was two weeks ago in the season opener, so it should be a fast track. And as for the coin flip, Bishop Lewers won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. They'll be kicking towards the scoreboard, Sean. All right, Eric P., thanks very much for the update there. As to the decision there, uh, Matt, again, Bishop Lewis getting the ball to start the second half, so their defense is going to be featured here first. When we look at that Homestead offense, they have a stable of playmakers. Let's talk about it a little bit. Well, it starts with their quarterback, Jake Archbold, and he's the top returning rusher for the Spartans. He had 261 yards rushing last year, so he's a dual threat quarterback under center who's able to make plays with his leg, but also look down the field. And when he's looking down the field, boy, does he have some weapons out there on the outside. Trayvon Taylor, the senior, 41 receptions, 791 yards and 13 touchdowns last year. And on the other side, you got Conrad Kazai. 41 receptions, 471 yards. Those two seniors are going to be huge for the Spartans today. What we're going to see out of Homestead, a lot of what they did last week is a lot of read option. Again, that quarterback back there, Jake Archbold, he's a junior, 6'1", 200. Really has a great field division. He's got some weapons on the outside, so he will test that defensive line early uh, with that read option play. But now it's Bishop Lewis to kick off from the 40, and here we go. It's a deep uh, spiraling kick, taking it about the four-yard line, gets up to the 10, up to the 20, looking for some room, finds a block. It's out to about the 26 before the return man is stopped. Nice tackle there by Contral Ash Jr. for the Knights. The junior linebacker coming up and making the stick, and Homestead will start with the ball. And up front for the Spartans, starting from left to right, left tackle Porter Hart, John Bond, Robert McCoy, Evan Keery, Query and Max Rubel. That's two re returning starters on that right side for the Spartans in Keery and Rubel. Look for them, those two seniors, to pave the way for running back Keon Reeder and Cam Rogers. Cam Rogers in the backfield right now, number 41, or is that Reeder number four? I saw the four. Here's Jake Archbold from the shotgun, and we've got a whistle. Stop the play. It is Cam Rogers getting the uh, call as the starting tail back there tonight. Uh, Pre-game, we got word that Keon Reader, number four, was going to be back there. But again, talent goes what talent does. And, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, whoever gets the start, they're, they're nearly interchangeable. Again, as Homestead um, works with a lot of different weapons here, it looks like this penalty was going to be against Bishop Lewers. Yeah, I think they had one of the guys up front over the ball in the, into the neutral zone for the Spartans. So that's a five-yard penalty to start out. So first and five here for the Spartans. Ball resting now at the 31-yard line for Homestead. Archbold in the shotgun. Man repositions to the right side. That's Little. <coughs> Here's a give to the tailback. Tries to bounce it outside. He's in the backfield and drop. Huge drop that time. Great pressure by the uh, Bishop Lewis defense. Yeah, that was defensive tackle Will Derrick. His 11th tackle on the year. He was in the backfield before the running back even got the ball, and he was there just waiting for him. So take that five-yard penalty, move him on back, and now we got second and 11. Second and 11. Uh, yeah, Knights lining up in a 3-4 defense. Three down linemen, Derrick, Hendricks, and Krieger up front. Rover on the end. On second and 11, Archibald will be in the shotgun again. Man in motion going across. Jet sweep, they give it to him. He tries the outside. He's got some room going north and south now. Gets the first down and a little bit more. Yeah, that was number two, Mitchell Wesner, the senior, coming around the end on a jet sweep to the far side of the field. Same side as Derek was on again. And that time he got in the backfield once again, but this time he's unable to make the tackle. So that's a first down for the Spartans. And look at this up pace offense. We're going to see that from both sides tonight. It's like about a, uh, an 11 yard gain that time for the Spartans. First and 10 now. 
Ball out at about the 32-yard line. Here's a snap. Quarterback keeper left side looking for some room. Dancing finally getting north and south into the linebacker core before he is forced out of bounds. We do have a flag on the play there, Sean. And I think yep. it's holding out on the on the outside against the Spartans, but we'll wait for the official call. Linebacker plays huge for the Knights tonight. This was something that they've been really working on all week long, making sure they're in the right spot, making the plays, and wrapping up when they have a chance. Alan Jackson and Nick Berkmeyer, the stalwarts back there, along with Cam Harris, part of that linebacker core. And again, this will be, as Matt said, holding against the Homestead Spartans. That will put them behind the sticks, and we will replay first down. Move the ball back to about the 23, check that 28-yard line. From the shotgun. Two wideouts on either side. He looks to throw on first. Guns it left side. It is caught. Yes, it is caught. Looks to be about maybe an eight-yard gain that time. Griffin Little, number nine, the junior, checks in at 6'3", 210. Archbold able to find a little bit of a soft spot there in the secondary of the Knights. Looks like the Knights are in a little bit of a cover, too, so not man coverage. So if they can find those bubbles, they can get those yards, but still a long way to go here, second and long. Second and a long 12 now for Homestead. Two wide receivers on the right side, one left, working off the left hash mark. He's got time, throws left into the flats. He's got his man, gets knocked out of bounds. He won't have enough for a first down. But again, that is Kazai, number 15, on the catch. Different receiver, but same exact play there for the Spartans. They work that far side of the field, little soft spot right behind the linebacker and right in front of the cornerback. Knights are going to have to either drop their linebackers back a little bit more or kind of cheat those corners up because that is going to be open all day long. Yeah. Brings up a third and three for Homestead. Ball just shy of the 45-yard line. Here's a snap. He looks to throw, looks to throw, fires left again. He's got his man. It is caught for a first down as he's taken out of bounds into Bishop Lewer's territory. That again is Kazai, number 15, on the reception. Yeah, Kazai with the reception tackle made by Nick Berkmeyer in that linebacker position. That's a tall task for a linebacker to try to get out there and cover these very athletic and quick wide receivers that Homestead has. So Berkmeyer is going to be busy all night. Nice job there to not give up the big play, but it is a first down for the Spartans. And so what the Spartans, I think, are doing are they're setting up a chair route or a double move route. Again, they're throwing to the flats on the short side, wanting the defense to creep up and then try and bite them long. That would be a standard MO here. First and 10 for Homestead in Lures territory at the 48. Read option. Give to the tailback. Left side. He finds some room. Still going down the uh, sidelines is number 41, Cam Rogers. Tackle made there by Ramon Anderson for the Knights. His 13th tackle of the year coming from the cornerback position. It was good flow there and good blocking up front by the Spartans as they keep on working the left side of that offensive line as Porter Hall and John Bond are doing a good job of getting some movement upfield. And there was not a Lures night within the first five yards of that carry. Yeah, Homestead has gone left, I think, almost every play here. Uh, and so they're working on the short side of the field. And that's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three. Ball to 42 of Lures. Here's a snap. Again, re give to the uh, tailback around the right side this time. They stretch it out. He gets maybe two down to the 40. Maybe one, actually. Yeah, not much there. Tackle there by Josh Tippold, his 14th of the year. That time, yeah, the first time they've come our way. And nice job there at the defensive end position by Kamari Harris, the linebacker. Dropped down, set the edge really nice, and kind of what you want to do on that those front four is just kind of absorb blockers. That way your linebackers and corners can run free and make plays, and that's exactly what Josh Tipple did, did there. That's right. All right, so here we go. Third and two, just outside the 40-yard line. Man in motion. Here's a snap. They flow to the left side. He's got a blocker. Decides to cut up, and it's going to be a scrum. I don't think he's going to get there. That's Trevin Taylor on the jet sweep. And if he's going to be short, just inside the 40 is where they're going to mark it. Really good job up front there. Number 78, Sam Gerritsen getting in the backfield and kind of sticking with them. And then Alan Jackson came in and finished it for the night. So a good stop here. It looks like the Spartans are going to have to punt here on fourth and short. I believe that's Griffin Little listed as the punter. Number nine. He's going to launch this one from about his own 48-yard line. Back deep as Gaston for the Knights. 
Kick is away. It's a high floater. Gaston has to come up for it. Bobbles it. Gets a hold of it. Breaks one tackle. Spins out of another. And finally gets taken down near the 20-yard line. So the Knights' defense holds on the Homestead first possession. And now we'll get to see Norman Kanapke and company come out onto the field for the Bishop Lures Knights for their first drive with the ball here in the first quarter. Still zeros on the scoreboard. Up front for the Knights, the nucleus, as they like to call themselves, at left tackle Jack Sweeney, left guard Michael Murphy, center Ben Rictanis, right guard Will Derrick, and right tackle Peter Suloff. They're going to try to get some movement up front and try to get this offense rolling early after a nice defensive stop by the Knights. They break huddle and come to the line. Kanepke will be in the shotgun. Gaston offset to the left. Man in motion now. Here's a uh, low snap. He looks to throw. Here's a screen. It is caught by Gaston. He's got it on the left side. He breaks a tackle out to the 30, the 35, still running near the 40 before he's pushed out of bounds. Incredible effort there, starting with Norman Kanapke to handle the snap and keep his composure. And then you had Jordan Presley on the outside as long as... Uh, uh, along with number seven, Josh Dippold, leading the way, blocking down the field. Good screen pass by the Knights, and they're already in motion here. First down at the 41. 21-yard uh, gain that time by Bishop Lewers. First and 10 from their own 41-yard line. Trips right now. Man in motion is Presley coming across the line. Fake to him. Give to Gaston. Tries his way through the middle. Gets stood up at the line and driven backwards. No gain there by the Knights. As a nice tackle by number 23 of Homestead. That is Kai Johnson, the senior. 5'11", 180 pounds, makes a nice stick. No gain. I like what the Knights were doing there. They were trying to get Jordan Presley coming in motion. As somebody who used to be a student at Homestead, you'd think that maybe they'd key on him, but they, didn't, they weren't fooled that time. Second and 10. Kanapke in the shotgun. Same formation. Trips to the right. Single setback. Looks over the defense. Here's a snap. He's got the ball. Looks, looks, fires over the middle, and it is caught by Presley. He breaks a tackle. The 30, the 25, the 20. They can't catch him. No flags. Touchdown. Jordan Presley comes through for the night. He's been one of the biggest sparks for Lures this whole year. Norman Kanapke picks up right where he left off last game with a nice throw down the middle of the field, and the Knights are on the board first. A 59-yard strike from Kanapke to Presley, who turns on the Jets, and the Knights score six here in the first quarter. Kanaki's fifth touchdown on the year. He came in with 363 yards of offense through the air and adds some more there. And the Knights get that early jump that they're looking for. Carter Drake in for the PAT. It is up and it is good. So a textbook start by the Bishop Lures Knights tonight. Their defense holds. The offense converts 7-0 is your first quarter score. Stick around, folks. We're back in 30 seconds. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. We are back to live action here. 735 remaining in the first quarter. The Bishop Lewers Knights come out on top to begin this contest. 7-0 to zero after a 59-yard strike from Kanapke to Presley. Let's send it down to the sidelines. And Eric Pete. Well, thanks, Sean. Great start for Bishop Lewers. And you don't want to dwell on the past, but you know these players have to remember the shellacking they got at the hands of the Spartans last year. 47-3 to three was the final score. The Knights have already beat their output from last year with seven points on the board. That 44-point loss, guys, Lures' worst loss in eight years. You better believe they want to get this one. Get that monkey off the back. That's precisely right. Thanks very much for that update, Eric. And now here's Bishop Lures to kick off, kicking right to left on your radio dial. Driven back near the eight-yard line, going across the field, looking for some room, runs into his own player and dropped shy of the 25 is a return man for the Homestead Spartans. That's Cam Shannon. We'll credit that tackle to Johnny Sewell, but you can also just credit it to Homestead High School because he ran right into the back of his own player, kind of made him already start stumbling to the ground. He fell right into Johnny's lap. So the Spartans will start on offense now. And you know, they had a good 
drive to start the game, last possession, doing really well with the pass, but then they ran it three straight times and had to punt. Let's see what they go to the air again here. From the shotgun, here's Archbold with a single setback. Looks to throw, throws left, finds his man. A little hitch route and caught near the 30-yard line and dropped. Not a surprise, they go right back to what's been working, and that's working that left side of the field and kind of finding that little bubble behind those linebackers. The Knights are kind of just giving it to them. It's keeping them from giving up the big play, but it's curious to see how long it takes before they break and decide they want to change it up. Griffin Little on the catch that time for, we'll call it seven. Second and three, here's the snap, looks to throw, looks to throw, fires left again, high this time, but Kazai does bring it down north of the sticks, and that should be enough for a Homestead first down. No surprise that he was a 40 reception player last year for the Spartans as he makes a really athletic play there to get the catch and get the first down for the Spartans. And here they go driving again through the air. Yeah, they got it at the 35-yard line. First and 10 for the Spartans. Moving left to right on your radio dial. Twin receivers left and right. Read option. Quarterback decides to keep it through the middle. It's paying off. He is dragged down. Flag coming out. That might be a face mask as his head was wrung as he was going down. He gets it out to about the 48. And this is going to be against Bishop Lewis. Jake Archbold shows off those legs and just like we said, the returning rusher for the Spartans is able to kind of read that defensive end and as soon as he sees the defensive end stay where he's at, meaning that he wants to go for the running back, he knows that he has a lane up the middle and that's what he takes. So an incidental face mask, uh, that's a five yarder, takes it into Bishop Lewer's territory. Down to the 47 and another first down for Homestead as they spread things out. Single man back as a protector as Archbold's in the shotgun. Twins right and left now, man in motion, across the line of scrimmage. Read option, quarterback keeper through the middle again. Gets into the linebacker core before he's taken down near the 40-yard line. Spartans running right behind Robert McCoy, Evan Creary, and John Bond. And it's working off so far as the Knights, after giving up a couple big pass plays, have now decided to sit back with those linebackers and trying to defend it. You can only give and take one way or the other. And right now, Homestead's having some success up the middle. Look for those big men up front for the Knights to try to stop them here. Seven-yard gain on first down brings up second and three for Homestead. Archbold, again, read option. This time, give to the tailback. Around the left side, he has enough for the first down. And not much more than that. That's Keon Reeder, 5'6", 150-pound senior tailback. Yeah, nice little burst there out of the senior to get into the second level and get the first down. I've been very impressed so far with Archbold's decision skills, knowing when to hand it off, when to keep it himself. So far, he's perfect on it. Let's see if he can keep it up. First and 10 for Homestead. 7-0 to zero is your score. Lures on top here in the first quarter. Ball resting at the 37-yard line of Lures. Homestead driving. Here's a snap. Archbold looks to throw. Checks off. Fires right. Tip drill. Incomplete. Ball was tipped right at the line and falls harmlessly to the ground. Hit down by the big bear paw of Jack Sweeney up front for the Knights. He's as Coach Causey, the defensive line coach for Lures, always says, get those hands up on pass plays, and it pays off there as he's able to swat it down at the line of scrimmage, second and 10 for the Spartans. Spartans checking their wrists. No real huddle for them as they come out with twins right and left and a single setback. Archbold in the shotgun again on second and 10. Here's the snap, looking right, looking left. Now interior a screen pass, and it does pay off. Gets nearly enough, maybe more, for a first down out to the 25. That's one that's gonna make you scratch your head if you're a Lures defensive line coach because your guys came untouched and they knew they came untouched. Once you realize that, it's important that you try to just stay where you're at because you know the ball's coming right back to you. They fell for the fake. Nice play by Homestead, first down. First and 10 at the Dwinger 20, or Lures 25, pardon me. Homestead driving just outside the red zone. Here it is, first down throw, tipped and incomplete that time. Linebacker play. I think that was 24. We got a paw on it there, man. Yes, it was. Nick Berkmeyer, a nice play. And, you know, we've called his name a lot early on in this game as they keep on picking on that side. And he's able to kind of make his adjustment, kind of fall back and make a play on the ball. Really good job there by Berkmeyer. So the first down is no good for Homestead. Brings up second and 10 from the 25 of Lures. Here's a snap. Read option again. Quarterback decides to keep it. He's hitting the backfield and drags a tackler with him. Shows the athletic ability of Jake Archbold to get some positive yards there. But that's going to bring up a third and test now for the Homestead Spartans. Nice run there by Archbold and a nice play on the defensive end by Jacob Krager. He was able to sit that time and suck in 
right when he found out that the quarterback was going to keep the ball and able to make the play. Nice job there by Krager. As he's going to, his name's going to be called a lot as well on that defensive end. He's going to be busy tonight. We'll call that a gain of four, bringing up a third and six now for Homestead. Ball just outside the red zone at the 21. Two wide outs to the right side. One wide left. Working off the left hash mark on a critical third down. Here's a snap. He looks right. He looks right. He throws right. Hit again and incomplete. Back-to-back -back defensive plays there by the Lures defensive line. That time it was Sam Gerritsen making the big play. Getting those hands up in the air and swatting down the ball. So play nine for Homestead on this drive. A nice long drive. Is stalling now. Fourth and five. And let's see what they do. The offense remains on the field. 4.43 to go here in the first quarter. 7-0 is your score. Homestead has it. Fourth and a long five. The ball is on the 21-yard line of Lures, and the offense is going to go for it here. Archibald in the shotgun. Here's the snap. He looks right. He looks right. Fires right. Guns it. And it's in and out of the hands of the receiver. Uh, that is uh, Trevin Taylor. Normally very sure-handed. There was a lot of steam on that ball, though, Matt. Yeah, he put a little extra juice on it, Archibald did. And normally Taylor, normally good. This time unable to come up with the play as it hit him right in the hands. That's the one he's going to wish he could have back. Knights bend. They don't break. Defense gets the turnover on downs. That's two straight turnover on downs for the Knights. And their offense takes over now at the 20. They are led by Norman Kanapke, the senior uh, quarterback for the Knights. In the backfield, he will have Gaston with him. Presley's going to be in the slot to the left. Two wideouts to the right. Man in motion now. Pitch, jet sweep to the outside. Coming this way and gets a few yards out. Gets a gain of three, maybe. Three or four out to the 25. Or is that at the 20? Yeah, I don't think he... He, he didn't gain gonna, anything. No, there, he didn't. No, sorry. Yeah, no gain. Sorry about that. Bad... Uh, there's a post right in my <laughs> That was Jay McJohnson on the jet sweep there by the Knights, and Homestead read it right from the get-go and was able to come up and make the play. It's interesting. They have Presley in the slot to start this game. Gaston at running back. Change of pace there. Here's a give to Gaston looking his way through the middle of the line. Won't find anything. And about three or four uh, Spartans come up, wrangle him, and throw him backwards. No gain there. Yep, back-to-back -back runs by the Knights and no movement up front by that offensive line. As you see Lures really trying to go off the edges. Now Homestead's making a wholesale substitution. Looks like bringing in some extra defensive backs as the Knights third and long here. Look, probably going to have to go to the air. Kanapke checks the sidelines. Barks out some calls. Third and ten now from his own 20. Gaston in the backfield with him. Offset to the right. Looks like we just... There's some confusion now. Yeah, they just changed up the play after they saw the Homestead defensive alignment. Let's see if it pays off here for Coach Stansky and the Knights. Game clock down to four. Now Ooh. we've got a flag. I think a hard count might have given him five yards uh, advantage here. Yeah, it looks like it might have as it looked like the far defensive end for the Spartans might have gotten a little jumpy as he was trying to get to that quarterback. So now third and ten becomes a little bit more manageable, third and five. Football fans, Dr. Osinga of Northeast Chiropractic Center is our 106.3 Sports media sponsor. You can catch all the highlights from past games on YouTube. Watch every touchdown, tackle, and halftime interview at youtube.com slash Redeemer Radio. After the penalty, it's going to be a third and long five now for the Bishop Lewers Knights. Here is a snap. Kanapke, he's got pressure. Gets out of the pocket. Throws downfield. Back and caught or no? Incomplete. He had to go down to get it. Presley says he had it. The official says no, and of course the official's going to win that one. Tough play there by Kanapke. A good job to avoid the pressure and get out of the pocket, rolling to his left, which is a hard throw because he's got to flip those shoulders and throw across his body. He tried to get it there, didn't have enough juice on it, and Presley went down for it, un unable to make the catch. So it looks like the Knights are going to punt here and get the ball back to the Spartans. Ben Jennings standing back at his own 10-yard line. Cam Shannon back standing near his own 45. Awaiting the snap. Here it is. Little low, but he's got it. Pressure comes. Big booming punt. Shannon's got it at his own 37. Hit immediately and dropped. Going to take a while to drop him, but they did get him. Nice play there by number four for the Knights. Johnny Sewell, that's twice now we've called his name on special teams, making a tackle and making a difference on the field. Sometimes these special team players, they can get a little bit frustrated because you're not on the field bunch. But when you are on the field, you make the most of it, and Johnny Sewell's done that so far tonight. So they mark the ball at the 37-yard line for Homestead. 7-0 to zero is your score. Bishop Lewers on top of the Spartans with 255 
remaining here in the first quarter. Spartans moving left to right on your radio dial. They are led by Jake Archibald, who's in the shotgun. Checks off, looks back at the sidelines, gets the play signaled in. We've got to change a quarterback. That's 12. That's Goody. Here's a snap. Throws out to the flats and incomplete. Thrown behind the receiver that time. Let's check in with Eric Pete. Yeah, you mentioned the change in quarterback. This is kind of a two-quarterback system for Homestead. They've got Jake Archbold starting the game. They've got Luke Goody, a sophomore, coming in, and he's more of the thrower. Archbold's more of the option player. Um, and from what I understand, they kind of have scheduled uh, back and forth uh, quarterback sharing. So we'll see how this works. We'll see if they find one of them having the hot hand and stick with them. Goody's in the shotgun. Behind him, offset to the right, is Cam Rogers. Here is a snap. Read option. Rogers has it around the end. And he's going to get hit right at the line of scrimmage. No gain there. Eric makes a good point. Goody, 21 of 34, 289 yards on the year and four touchdowns. But when you still run that read option, offense if the Knights know that he's maybe not much of a runner it kind of takes away half of that threat okay. and Knights are able to know that that running back more likely than not is going to get the ball and makes a nice stop there here comes third and long yeah it looks like they did have a gain of one there brings up third and nine as Goody remains for this series as quarterback looks like Knights showing blitz here both middle linebackers creeping up Twins right and left. Big pressure coming. He's looking to throw. Airs it out. Over the middle. Well over. In stride. It is caught. Little is gone. The 10. The 5. Touchdown. A beautiful throw by the sophomore Luke Goody to the open receiver Griffin Little who got behind the defense and scorched the Knights for 6. Griffin Little uses that 6'3", 210-pound frame as the quarterback is able to just float it right over the, de the defense of the Knights for a touchdown, and we're an extra point away from tying this game up. A 72-yard strike by Homestead puts the score at 7-6 to six with the PAT getting ready to be uh, on its way here. That was a huge play and beautifully executed by Homestead. Here's a snap, the hold, the kick. All three look good. And they are as Crandall puts it through. We are knotted up at sevens here with 2.02 remaining in the first quarter. Stick around, folks. We're back in 30 seconds. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. And that game is tied at sevens, just like this one. Back up to you guys. All right. Thanks very much, Nick, for the update there. Seven to seven is our score here. First quarter action. Homestead taking on Bishop Lewers here on the south side of town. And Homestead, after the big 72-yard score, getting ready to kick this one away. Ball resting at the 40. They're going to use the left hash mark. As Crandall, the freshman, number 92, gets ready to put his leg into this one. Three men back deep, including Presley and Gaston, for the Bishop Lewers Knights. Short kick, taken by an up back that time, and hit near the 30. He breaks a tackle, tries to get some positive yards. I don't think they knew who they were uh, kicking to there. <laughs> That was uh, number 21, Kamari Harris, the linebacker, who's able to make an athletic play to make the, the catch on the kick. And I had to imagine that Lures sideline was yelling, get down, get down. But, you know, <laughs> it's not very often a linebacker gets to run with the ball. So he was looking to maybe get some green pastures ahead of him. But nonetheless, short gain, but a good field position for the Knights here on offense. Let's see if they can do anything with it. The ball is resting at the 37-yard line for the Bishop Lures Knights on offense. 
Kanapke comes out of the huddle. Gaston again, the only setback here. Three receivers to the right side, including Presley. Kanapke looks over the defense, awaiting the snap. Here it is. Give to Gaston through the middle. Gets stuck at the line, falls forward, gets out to about the 40 before he is taken down. We'll call that a gain of three. Nice blocking up front there by Peter Suloff, who's moved over to left guard for this game. Different than his assignment in previous games, but he's able to make a nice, nice run block there in Knights second and mid. Presley checks out right now. Actually, okay. Gaston's going to take out, and Presley's coming back in. Okay. He will be the only setback here. We've got two wide receivers to the left. On the short side, one wide right is Hedgecock. On second and seven, Kanapke with five to go on the play clock. Now a man in motion, and we had two men moving at the same time. And now a timeout from Bishop Lures. Obviously, they had some confusion going on before this play, and they want to talk about it. So we'll go ahead and step out for a little 30-second break. 7-7 seven to seven is your score here in the first quarter. You're listening to Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. We're running play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business. It's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana and beyond. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Dignity, integrity, respect, and responsibility is proud to sponsor tonight's game. You can catch the Lures spirit at www.bishoplures.org. The timeout is over. The Knights are back out on the field. Second and seven coming up from their own 40-yard line. Knights moving right to left on your radio dial. Man in motion now across the line to the far side. Can have you with this uh, pitch this time. Presley goes for uh, Green Acres around the edge. Gets north and south, wrangled, and he's going to be... Oh, there seems to be a big scrum on the far side. Was the ball loose is the question. I think Presley had that the entire time, Sean, but the effort, I mean, yeah. you're right. It's just a swarm of white jerseys there on Presley, and it looks like that he was just able to kind of try to spin and try to get a couple more yards, but it's important when you have those situations to hold on to that football because yeah. you know those Homestead Spartans are trying to strip away at it. He gets it out to the 45-yard line. That brings up a third and two now for the Knights. Two wideouts to the left, one wide right. Here's a give to Presley going to the right side. He will not get it. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Great penetration that time by the Homestead defense. Nice job there by Homestead on that right side. It looked like it was Christian Zeke and Kai Johnson able to make the stick and stop the Knights short, but fourth and short here. It looks like the offense is going to stay on the field for the time being, but it looks like maybe we're going to have a little chat here. I don't know if we're getting close here to the end of the quarter. We are close to the end of the quarter. Three, two, one. That'll do it for the end of the quarter, ladies and gentlemen. We are knotted up at sevens here as the clock runs out. We're going to switch sides and come back for a second quarter SAC action. We'll step out for a one-minute break. You are listening to SAC Football here on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. We're treating injuries when and where they happen and working to prevent them before they do. We believe the best care is coordinated care, helping ensure you get the individualized services you need every step of the way, offering innovative treatment techniques to get you or the athlete you love back in play. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far. So they're setting you up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education, but also the experience. We'll punt this one away on fourth and two from their own 45. Ben Jennings gets his leg into it high, spinning ball, gets a nice lures bounce. Going to be taken inside the 20, down to about the 12-yard line and touched up there. Beautiful punt 
by Bishop Lures and Jennings. Yeah, those Bishop Lures field dads have been out on this field for two straight weeks after that monsoon opening night here at Lures Field, and the turf is back to being firm, flat, and a nice for a nice bounce there as Jennings gets a good roll and gets the Spartans inside the 20. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, two weeks ago, you would have never told me this field would mm -hmm. look in such good shape. Yeah, so hats off to that crew. Man, they've done a spectacular job getting the field ready for tonight. Okay, so Homestead, after the punt, will take over. First and 10, deep in their own territory, back at the 12. Trying to get her. It looks like Good. Uh, Goody is back as quarterback. Hard count. And I think that's going to be a free five yards for Homestead. Yeah, I think they got two Bishop Blewers nice to jump offside on that outside edge. So it's going to be free five yards for the Spartans. And you are correct. It is Goody back in at quarterback after that nice throw on the long touchdown pass last possession. As he's going to try to continue that momentum here to start the second quarter. They move the ball out to the 12-yard line. Check that 17-yard line. It was on the 12. So first and five coming up for Homestead. From the shotgun is Goody. Man in motion now going across the line. Fake to him. Give up the middle. Looking for some room. He's into the linebacker core. Gets stuffed near the stick. And I think he's going to have enough for a first down. Yep. Looks like first down there for the Spartans. A nice, nice run up the middle by Homestead and good blocking up front as that crew has done a really good job getting movement all night long up the middle as the Spartans look to the sideline for the next play. Looks like Braden Hardwick was the uh, uh, ball carrier that time for Homestead. He checks in as a sophomore, 5'10", 170 pounds. All right, first and 10 now for the Spartans. Little checks off to the left side. Now another man in motion coming to the left side. They fake to him, go up the middle again. Not as much there for Braden this time. Yeah, a little misdirection there by the Spartans as they had the wide receiver coming in motion. A little bit of a counter action there with the fake to the wide receiver and a handoff to the running back up the middle. Nice job by the Knights linebackers, Kamari Harris and Nick Berkmeyer to come up, fill the hole, and make the stop. Second and seven, maybe a, a, a short eight here for the Spartans. On second down, quarterback in the shotgun here. Two wideouts to the left side, one wide left. He looks to throw guns at left. He's got his man right at the sticks. It is caught. Trevin on the catch that time. Taylor, number 89, and they're moving the chains again for Homestead. Good possession catch there by Trayvon Taylor. A good comeback after that one he dropped earlier in the game to make that play and move the sticks. Tackle there by the Knights, number 12, which is Cameron Hedgecock. Hedgecock playing a little cornerback. Nick Burkmeyer was there as well. First down, Homestead. Ball at the 34-yard line of Homestead. They started at the 12. Looks to throw. A little uh, loft screen over the middle. Waiting for his blockers is Taylor, and he's going to get dragged down by a host of tacklers out there in the flats on the right side. That's the second really athletic play we've seen Taylor make going up and getting that ball on a rocket screen where he had lineback linemen and wide receivers out in front of him. That's a ball that you really want right in the chest. That way he can run with it. He had to go up really high to grab it. By the time he came down, those Knights defenders were there. Second and short, Homestead. Second and two now for the Spartans dressed in white with the golden blue accents. Ball closer to midfield, out to about the 43. Here's a read option. Gives to the tailback. Around the side, he's got first down into Bishop Lewer's territory. Again, that's number 26, Braden Hardwick on the run. Hardwick comes in with only five carries on the year for 10 yards and a touchdown. So he's making his presence known here on this drive for Homestead as they're moving the ball right down the field against this Knights defense. Last time they were able to do this, the Knights were able to finally get a stop, but Homestead has the momentum. Ball now in between the 47 and 48 yard lines of Bishop Lewer's and a fresh set of downs now for the Spartans. They check off, come back with a new play after checking in with the sidelines. Here's a snap, quick screen, left side, it is caught. Trying to get around the edge is number five for Homestead, and he will get down to about the 40-yard line of Bishop Lewers. Nice tackle there by Ramon Anderson and Josh Dipple coming up from the cornerback positions to make the play. Good block on the outside by Homestead to get a really nice chunk there on first down, and they've able to have these second and shorts, which helps open up that offense because you can take a shot downfield or you can go with the more conservative play, but there's a lot of playbook you can work with when it's second and short. 
Seven to seven is your second quarter score here. Homestead driving on second and three. Ball resting at the Lures 40. Here's a snap. Jet sweep, read option. He's hitting the backfield. He's going to be dropped back at about the 43-yard line. There's where you see the indecisiveness of the quarterback yeah. and the running back there as they held that ball together, almost did like a little do-si-do -si -do dance with each other for a while, which gave Jacob Krager a chance to come up from his defensive end position and make a stop in the backfield. So after a second and short, now we have third and mid, and this is kind of the same thing that we saw the Knights defense do last time when they had the situation. Let's see if they can get off the field. Third and six coming up for the Homestead Spartans. Ball resting at the 43-yard line. Goody gets the play, barks it out to his line. Trips package to the right side, one wide left on the short side. Here's a snap. Looks right, looks right, throws right, guns it, and incomplete. No good that time. He was going for Taylor, who had to go down to the carpet to try and get it, and incomplete. Tough throw there by Goody as he had linebacker Kamari Harris back in coverage trying to get in front of the man and the quarterback so he had to try to throw it low and it went too low so the Knights get another stop after an, another seven play drive by the Spartans and looks like they're going to have to punt it here inside their own territory. Little is back to punt this one away for Homestead he's standing at his own 42 yard line should launch it from about his own 45 Gaston stands back near his own 10 wouldn't it be just surprised to see a fake here, Sean, as this is yeah. an opportunity inside the 50, but it looks like he's going to kick it away. High, end over end, short kick. Back away, back away. It takes a lure's hop sideways. It'll be north of the 20 at about the 24-yard line. So the Bishop Lures Knights defense holds and gives the ball back to their offense here with 7.59 to go here in the second quarter. Again, your score, 7-7. Seven to seven. Folks, just a reminder... Redeemer Radio would like to thank Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for their continual support of our Catholic high school sports coverage in Fort Wayne. That's Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Wonder what's going on up at Notre Dame this weekend. I don't know. Have you heard anything going on up there? Um, well, I was with Kirk Herbstreet last night, and he said something about going up there for a game day. I don't know what that's okay. all about, but maybe college football is back, and Could it's my be. favorite time of the year. I don't know about you. <laughs> Absolutely. First and ten for the Knights. Looks to throw. Here's a screen. He's got it. And he's going across the field. He's got some running room. Has a block deep. Gets down to the 40 to about the 41. Beautifully exec uh, executed middle screen that time. Receiver was Jay McJohnson. Jay McJohnson with a nice play coming over the middle for the Knights. That's his fifth reception on the year. He had 44 yards coming into the game. A nice chunk there. And it looks like we have a penalty now that on that Homestead side. Let's see what the call is. Yeah, it might be a late flag here. I didn't get the call. I don't know if anybody on our sidelines may have, but Eric, what'd you see down there? Well, I didn't see the actual play happen, but I did see the uh, the head referee make the indication for face mask, and there it is again. Face yeah. mask on the defense. So, okay. So already a, a chunk for the Knights, and it looks like they're going to tack on some more to it. Yeah, that, that'll be a spot foul, and do they add five? Yes, it's just five there. So just there. an incidental so, there. Okay. So that moves the ball out to the Bishop Lewis 43-yard line. They're approaching midfield here with a fresh set of downs. We saw a lot of run plays from the Knights' last possession. They come out here throwing the ball early. They had a lot of success through the air so far this game as Kanapke's done a good job making decisions with the ball. Kanapke's back in the shotgun. And here's a draw play. Give to Presley. Left side. He's got room. He is off to the races. The 40, the 35, the 30. He's down to the 20. He's got a man to beat. Pushed out of bounds inside the 10. Little draw up the middle to Jordan Presley. That's an easy play for the offensive line to block. As it looks like a flag just fell out of the referee's pocket there. Right. As that little possess that little second hold gives the line a chance to get up into their defenders and move them down the field. Good job up front by the Nucleus. And the Knights are in the red zone. Inside the five, down at about the three-yard line. Here's a, a give to Presley again. Off tackle left. Touchdown, Presley. Impressive drive by number two for the Bishop Lures Knights. Six more points on the board for the men in black. A, a just a staple of this Lures offense. It's been around for years. You get a big chunk play. You get to that line of scrimmage as fast as you can, and you hand it right back to that horse, and he goes right up the middle. Second touchdown of the night for Jordan Presley as Connor Drake is on for the extra point. He follows the 54-yard jump with a three-yard score. And here is the PAT. The snap was a little off, but corrected and good. 14-7 is now your score. Bishop Lures on top of Homestead in the second quarter with 7-19 remaining. Stick around, folks. We're back in 30 seconds. 
You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Seven nine, seven nineteen remaining here in the second quarter. The Bishop Lures Knights on the back of Jordan Presley have just scored on a 56-yard drive. And the score is now 14-7 as the Bishop Lures Knights prepare to kick this one away to the Homestead Spartans. I have to imagine if you're the coaching staff for the Bishop Lures Knights, it didn't take much to get Jordan Presley fired up and ready to go for this game as he has a lot of familiar faces on that other sideline as he used to be a student at Homestead. Yep. So it's always fun to play against some of your old friends and kind of have some healthy competition out there on the field. And so far, he's making his presence known. Well, and interestingly enough, you know, in, in that case, the, the pass actually set up the run, you know. And so hats off to the coaching staff for Bishop Lures as they started to loosen up that Homestead de uh, defense and give Presley some room to run. So, yeah, beautiful job play calling that time. Here is the uh, kickoff by Bishop Lures. And it's going to be taken near the 15-yard line. Cutting across is Cam Shannon looking for a lane. He's going to find some room in the middle. Is hit after a nice return. Gets to about the 28-yard line. And that is where Homestead will take off. Tackle there by Josh Tipple. As we see, a lot of defensive secondary backs out there on the kick kickoff team for the Knights as they gave up a kick return touchdown last week against Wayne after a touchdown. So a nice job there to kind of corral that Homestead return man and now the Spartans will start on offense here trying to tie it up. And it looks like number seven Jake Archbold is back on the field for the Spartans. Behind him will be number 41 Cam Rogers as the single setback offset to the right. Twins right, twins left. Here we go on first and ten. Here's a snap, read option, quarterback has it, throws over the middle, wide open. He's got his man, he's got the first down and more, gets out to about the 47-yard line before Kazai is stuck and stopped. Nice job there by Kazai and a good play design there on the coaching staff of Homestead. You bring back in the dual threat quarterback and you go right to the read option, but this time it's play action and the Knights linebackers got sucked in on that fake handoff and he was able just to pop it right over the top for a big gain. First and 10 out to the 46-yard line for Homestead. From the shotgun, here is a snap. He looks to throw again. No, he decides to keep it. Tucks it, breaks it outside. Now goes back towards the middle. Gets some positive yards. He's going to be down just inside Lewis territory. Definitely not a design run there by Archbold, but as soon as he kind of caught the, the snap and looked upfield, he saw both defensive ends for the Knights getting to him really quickly. So he was able to step up in the pocket and get a gain out of it. A nice job there to extend the play and get some positive yards. So they mark it right at the midfield stripe here. Again, second quarter action, 6.16 to go. 14-7, Bishop Lures on top of Homestead. Homestead driving with second and we'll call it uh, second and a five, maybe six. Five and a half. <laughs> Here's a snap. Play action, looks to throw, guns it over the middle. It is caught and it's stuck right away. He breaks one tackle. Little out there playing bigger than his name suggests. Almost breaks a tackle and gets free, but he is down but not after a very nice completion. Yeah, Little's been a problem for the Knights to cover all night long as he had the touchdown catch earlier in the game. That time, same thing, play action, wide open over the middle of the field as he found a little soft spot in that Bishop Bluers Knights zone defense. And when you find that spot, you just sit in it and wait for that ball. And Archbold was able to deliver it. 17-yard gain that time for Homestead. First and 10 again for the uh, Spartans. Now a man in motion, right to left, read option. Quarterback decides to keep it, and he is hit immediately. But his athleticism continues, and he's still gets positive yards. It just shows you why he used to be a running back before he became a quarterback this year as his momentum is always going forward. Good running backs know how to keep their momentum forward. That way when they do get tackled, at least they're falling forward and he's able to get two yards out of it. On the other side for the Knights, great play there on the defensive end there by Krager as he was able to come up and make the stick and try to limit a big gain. Second and eight now for Homestead. Man in motion coming across the line. Looks to throw. Play action. Throwing deep. Left side. Single coverage. It is tipped and nearly picked. 
incomplete, no flags. Great coverage by number six out there. Yeah, nice job there by the Knights in the secondary. Number six for Lures. Joe Derrick makes the play. The junior comes up big, gets the stop. Third and long now at Homestead in another situation that we've seen him in a couple times today. Third and eight coming up for the Spartans. They are in Lures territory. Ball resting at the 31-yard line. Big down here. Here's a snap. He rolls to the right, looking to throw, looking to throw. Guns it, and it is caught near the 10-yard line. Great catch that time by number two for the Homestead Spartans. Mitchell Wesner. Wesner, yeah. The senior makes the play for the Spartans, and you could see him coming over the middle of the field as Homestead this time gets their quarterback, rolled out to the right, gets him on the move, kind of extends the pocket, gives him more time to look downfield, and he's able to find the open receiver. So they mark it north of the 10 at about the 13-yard line. First and uh, 10 for the Spartans. As they step away from the play, look back to the sidelines. Want to check out the Bishop Lures defense here. Two receivers on the short side working off the right hash mark. Now a man in motion flowing to the right, and it's going to be another read option. Quarterback decides to keep it, and he's going to be dropped right at the line of scrimmage. I've seen great adjustment by the defensive ends of the Bishop Lures Knights. That time, on the other side of the field, Will Derrick able to get upfield, and this time he just sits and waits, and he says, you make the decision. Are you going to hand it off or are you going to keep it yourself? Either way, I'm going to make the play, and he does there for the Bishop Lures. Nice job, Will Derrick. S second down for Homestead. Yeah, loss of one on the play brings up second and uh, 11. From the shotgun. Here's the snap. Archibald looks to throw. Screen pass left side. It is caught and immediately breaks one tackle. Cannot break the second tackle. Getting down to about the 10-yard line is Kazai, number 15. Nick Berkmeyer is there first and was able to slow him up. And then after a couple more yard gain, Kamari Harris comes in and cleans up the play. So instead of what looked to be maybe no gain, Homestead gets a couple yards out of it, but still third and long here just about at the 20 yard line call that maybe a gain of four Excuse looks me, like a, uh, a third and seven maybe coming up for uh, Homestead from the 10 yard line they are in the red zone could be four down territory very easily uh, right now 14 to 7 is your score lures on top here in the second quarter play clock down to eight Here's a snap. Archbold. Empty backfield. Looks to throw. Guns it left. High and incomplete that time. Little was his intended receiver in the corner of the end zone. And that is going to stop the clock with 3.29 remaining here in the first half and bring up a fourth down. Tenth play there by the Spartans on this drive. And, and Lures does a good job stopping them. And it looks like they might come on here and try a field goal attempt. That's the second drive for Homestead that has resulted in 10 or more plays, but no points in the end zone, but maybe they can tack on three here. Colin Crandall, number 92, will do the duties. He's going to be kicking from about his 18-yard line, so this is going to be a 28-yard attempt for Crandall and Homestead from the center of the field. Here's a snap. The hold is good. The kick is up. It looks right, but did it go in? It is. Good. It's good. So Homestead converts on the 28-yard Crandall field goal. And they put three more points on the board. 14 to 10 is your score now with 323 remaining here in the first half. We're going to send it down to the sidelines and check in with Eric Pete. Well, you guys mentioned a big defensive stop there by Bishop Lewers holding him to a field goal. Keep in mind, this is the SAC's leading offense in the Homestead Spartans. 74 points in the first two games. And they've only put 10 on the board here late in the first half. So Bishop Lures challenged on defense coming into this game, particularly after giving up uh, 30, 35 points to Wayne last week. They have answered the bell. They surely have, Eric. Well, we've got a little bit of time here. Going to keep it with you. Uh, physicality down there, what are you seeing? Who's flying to the ball? I mean, I know things are obviously popping, but is anything standing out to you? Well, I, I think it's just been how opportunistic the Lures defense is playing. You know, they have, as uh, Matt mentioned earlier, kind of the bend but not bend but don't break defense. Uh, you know, they've given up some big plays, some big chunks, but when it's come to the red zone, when it's gotten onto their side of the field, they've really buckled down, and that's where the physicality has come into play. Great stuff. Good observation, Eric P. Thanks so much for that. Crandall will be in to kick this one away for the Spartans. Ball is on the 40. They uh, put it on the left hash mark. Three men back deep, including Presley and Gaston. Looks like Johnson back there, too. Number three for the Bishop Lures Knights. 
One, two, three back there. High end of her end kick. Sailing into near the end zone. Presley's got it at the one. Looking for some room. Gets out to the 20. Evades a couple tacklers. Little horse collar there, but the still gets out close to the 30-yard line. Looks like we have a penalty oh. on the field there right about the 30-yard line of the Knights. And it looks like we got a hold against Lures, so it's going to back them up here to start their drive. Tough break there by for the Knights. So let's see. They were going to put this one at the 30-31. So they will mark it back, presumably, towards the 20-yard line. 14-10 is your second quarter score. Bishop Lures now takes over after the 28-yard field goal by Colin Crandall. He is a freshman kicker, number 92 for Homestead. We've got 314 remaining here in the first half. And they do spark, uh, spot the ball at the 20-yard line, and that's where Kanapkin and company will come out and take over for Bishop Lures. As you mentioned earlier, the Knights went to the air to set up the run. Let's see what they do this time if Presley comes in motion. Here's a snap, quick dump. That is Gaston looking for some room. Caught from behind. He'll fall forward for a few, not much more than that. Good play design there by Coach Stansky, the offensive coordinator for the Knights. You take your guy who just had the big run and the touchdown, and you send him in motion, trying to get those linebackers to go with him, and then try to sneak Gaston off the backside for a screen. Homestead does a good job staying home at the defensive end and linebacker positions and makes a stop here second and long. Second and eight now for the Bishop Lures Knights. As Gaston adjusts over to the left side offset, now a man in motion is Presley. Here's a snap. They give it to him. Jet sweep left side. Cuts it up. Takes three men to bring him down. And he will get another few yards here. Let's see. It's going to be out to about the 28, 29 yard line. Tackle there was number 41 for the Spartans. Cam Rogers. So he plays a little running back and also plays a little linebacker and free safety for the Spartans. He comes up and makes a nice play. Third down for the Knights and a big opportunity here to move the chains and keep their defense rested and on the sideline. Third and four for the Knights as Kanapke barks out the signal. Twins left, twins right. Kanapke from the shotgun. Draw play. Gaston has it. Will he have enough for the first down? It's going to be very close. I think he's going to have it at the 32. Yes, they do mark a first down. So Gaston able to get four and a half on that and move the chain. Good blocking there by Jack Sweeney and Peter Suloff coming around, pulling. Looks like it was a little bit of a tray right, a delay handoff to Gaston. He was able to get north and south and get the, just enough for the first down. Knights, fresh set of downs. Under two minutes to go now here in the first half. Knights with a first and ten. Here's a snap. Kanapke looks to throw out to the flats. Presley's got it. He bounces off of one tackle. And it's going to be dropped after about a two, maybe three yard gain, close to the 35. Good pass protection up front, and Kanapke is able to just take what the defense is giving him as he's able to get a couple yards here on first down. As now he looks over the sidelines to get the next play. Clock continues to run at about 110 now in the first half. Kanapke from the shotgun on second and long. Throws deep, got a seam route, and it is caught, and he's off to the races. The 20, the 10, the 5, touchdown Johnson. Jay McJohnson for Bishop Blewers comes through, a nice seam route right over the middle of the field, a perfect ball there by Norman Kanapke. That's the second deep ball we've seen him throw today, right on the money. Jay McJohnson comes in with only four receptions for 44 yards on the year, his longest being 24 before that, but he's able to put his stamp on this right before the half for the night. A 65 yard gash by Bishop Lures puts them in further control of this game in the waning moments of the first half. It is Kanap to Johnson over the middle and a beautiful strike and run. Now for the PAT, it is up and it is good even after a little bobbled snap right there. So another point on the board for the Knights. 21-10 is your score with 56 seconds remaining here in the first half. We're going to step out for a 30 second break. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM.
21-10 is the score here from Lewers Field. The Knights on top of Homestead with 56 seconds remaining in the first half. Let's check in with Eric Pete. Well, you got to love the spirit from the Lures guys on the sideline. Johnson, after that touchdown, comes over. He's taking high fives from his teammates. He says, keep working. It ain't over yet. Keep working. It ain't over yet. He That's is it. ready to go. There you go. Wow. That was an exciting play by the Bishop Lures Knights. And uh, look forward to more of that possibly from both squads in the second half. Again, we, we hearken back uh, last week, Matt, you know, when we look at the Spartans and their performance against Concordia, who came out in the first half and really just brought a shock and awe campaign. Um, wow, what a difference the, the second half can make in these games, huh? Yeah, it's it's important if you're homestead. You have a lot of seniors, a lot of returning starters. You just kind of got to go with the waves and try to just weather the storm. And then when you get your opportunities, you can't miss them. And there's an opportunity here, here before half to maybe get some momentum back on their side. Shannon from about the 10-yard uh, lines. He's stuck at the 20, gets no further, and that's going to garner some big support, uh, applause by the Lures faithful. Nice big stick out there in the open field. That big stick by Ben Jennings as he was able to go low, grab those legs, and lift up. Just, that was a form tackle. When you look up a textbook tackle, it's Ben Jennings right there making the stick and stopping Homestead at the 20-yard line. So a long way to go here with the short clock. Ball is resting at the 20-yard line. 47.8 seconds remaining here for Homestead. Can they make something of the waning seconds here in the first half? Let's find out. Looks like Jake Archbold is back on the field as the uh, quarterback. Here is the snap. He looks to throw on first down. He tucks it and runs. He's got some daylight around the right side. Can he make the corner? Going for the sidelines, gets wrangled and steps out of bounds. North of the 20 gets maybe one or two yards there on the uh, the scamper. If anything. Yeah, they're going to yeah, move it forward. There, okay. Yeah. So he gets out of bounds with 40 seconds remaining here in the first half. And that's going to bring up a second and eight for the Spartans. I'm not sure Homestead's at a spot yet where they're going to start taking shots down the field. They're going to need one chunk play here at some point to get them near the 50-yard line before they think about maybe starting to throw it up. Here's a snap. He rolls left, rolls left, looking to throw. Guns it into the flats. He's got little. It is caught near the 40-yard line. And did he step out? They do whistle the clock stop. Yeah, they got to move the chains there for the first down. Right. But he was in bounds. A nice tackle there by number six, Joe Derrick of the Knights, to keep him in bounds. But Homestead's going to have to burn a timeout here because he's unable yep. to get out of bounds. That's right. So the clock stops here after the first down. 32.8 seconds remaining in the first half. Again, your score, 21-10, the Bishop Lures Knights over the Homestead Spartans. Homestead uh, trying to put something together here in the waning moments of the first half. Lots to talk about during our halftime show. I think Nick Gray is going to have some administrators on from Bishop Lures High School, so we'll get an update from there. And just a reminder, folks, that next week, Redeemer Radio, Bishop Dwinger takes on Homestead at Homestead at 7 p.m. Remember that tailgate talk starts at 6, followed by our Game of the Week coverage. It'll be the Bishop Dwinger Saints visiting Homestead out at Spartan Field out there at 7 p.m. And also remember, if you're not here locally to listen on 106.3 FM, you can listen around the world at RedeemerRadio.com. Along with Matt Geely, I'm Sean McBride, and this has been, Matt, a really great first half of action, especially if you're a Knights fan. And um, after this timeout, we'll talk a little bit about what we've seen. So the timeout is over. The play is getting ready. This is Homestead on first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. They check off as Archbold once again looks to the sidelines, barks out an audible. Tailback offsets to the right now. Here's a snap. He flows right, looks to throw. Little out pattern. It is caught and dragging a tackler with him. Close another, to midfield. Another timeout here by Homestead. That is Kazai on the catch. And that's going to bring up a second and two then for Homestead when play resumes. Again, Matt, I, I think Eric was, was you know, spot on in his uh, analysis. The Bishop Lewis defense, very opportunistic. Mm -hmm. um, but again, picking their spots when they had to bend and not break, really presenting a third and long situation on a regular basis to Homestead. And a couple times, sure, Homestead did convert. But more often than not, they weren't able to. Yeah, you take away the one big play that Little had over the middle with the nice long touchdown catch 
for the Spartans. You take that play out of the equation, and it was a near-perfect half for that defense because you just want to see as Homestead moves down the field, just your guys not giving up and right. finding a way to get a stop and get off the field because as it, there's nothing better than a defender on the sideline seeing your offense put up big number on that scoreboard, and it makes you want to go out there and help contribute as well and see if they can do it here before the half ends. Second and two for Homestead. The timeout is over. Again, they take their time, they look over the defense, and then the play is called in. Two wide receivers on the left side, two right. Here's the snap. He looks to throw, looks over the middle, throws over the middle. It is caught. That's Kazai again. Good yards after the catch into Bishop Lewer's territory. Down at about the 38-yard line. And let's see. We've got uh, 18 seconds remaining. That'll be enough for the first down. When the uh, chain's set, they will wind the clock, and then he spikes the ball, so he will burn that first down <coughs> just to stop the clock. So, again, let's reset. It is second and 10 for Homestead. The ball is resting at the 38-yard line of Bishop Lures. Big catch by Kazai that time to move the ball down the field, and now they take their time looking over to the sidelines, getting that play in. Archibald will be in the shotgun. Running back offset to his right. Two uh, wideouts left and two right. He looks to throw. Short drop. Going deep. Fade pattern. Left side. Double coverage. He's up and got it. Unbelievable catch by Little. Near the 10-yard line. Great throw. Great catch there by Homestead. And now they have a chance here to put some points on the board as it looks like the Spartans are trying to get set up. And we have... A stoppage on the clock. It looks like... Yeah, he spiked the ball. Yeah, he did. He spiked the ball. He had to spike the ball. It stops the clock with 5.7 seconds remaining. It is second and goal just inside the nine-yard line. Boy, Little just high-pointed that ball. Eric, what would you see down there? Well, I'm confused by that call. They have one timeout left, five seconds left. Why not call the timeout? Yeah. You don't have time for another play after this one. On second and goal. Okay, they back off the line again. See if they can glean anything from that defense. Yeah, to play from Eric, this has got to be a quick play if they're not going for the end zone, if they want to try to get the timeout. Here's a snap, quick throw, left side. He's got it on the slant. He has stood up, and he will not get in. Will that do it? The Bishop Lewis Knights survive the attack. Zeroes on the scoreboard as Lytle cannot get down fast enough. Homestead cannot call the timeout, and that's going to do it for your first half, ladies and gentlemen. Eric described that perfectly as yes. the, trying to spike the ball and trying to save your timeout. It works if you're able to get down, but that Knights defense swarmed the wide receiver right when he caught the ball and kind of held him up and put him to the ground to keep him off the board. Let's head down to Eric Pete with Coach. Hey, I'm, I'm here with Coach Lindsey. Coach, you got a sec? Yeah. Hey, thanks. Talk about your defense holding that Homestead team to 10 points. Uh, you know, the philosophy kind of this week has been, but don't break. Uh, we know that's a very potent offense. Um, you know, Coach Skelton's a heck of an offensive coordinator. Uh, they got two guys that can run the show. They got guys out wide. They're big up front. Uh, we knew completely stopping them probably wasn't going to happen. So you got to, you got to, you know, be patient, get to the ball. Uh, and so far, I think we've tackled a lot better than we did a, a week ago. So I think that's been the difference for this defense. Thanks very much, Coach. Good luck. You bet. Thank you. Sean? All right. Thanks very much, Eric. Pete, that's going to do it for the first half of action, ladies and gentlemen. 21-10. The Bishop Lewis Knights over the Homestead Spartans so far. Stick around. Lots more great football action coming up, including our halftime presentation. We're going to step out for a one-minute break. You're listening to S. When you experience a sports injury, muscle, or joint pain, you want treatment right away. Parkview Ortho Express provides same-day orthopedic and sports injury care without referral or appointment, offering diagnostics, x-rays, the region's only body composition DEXA scan right inside of the Sport 1 Parkview Fieldhouse. Walk in Monday through Thursday, 7 to 7, Friday, 7 to 5, and Saturday, 8 to noon. For more information, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash ortho express. It's the comments. Comments from the from the sky. 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 
this is the first time I've been able to do this kind of more uh, complete understanding or view of your body. One of the things that's really important about this is that it's kind of legitimizing us as athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Concussions. They're a concern for parents of athletes in any sport. That's why Parkview Sports Medicine is leading the way with the area's first concussion clinic. Our integrated sports medicine team utilizes an innovative, evidence-based approach to manage athletic-related head injuries in those 14 and older, providing comprehensive care to get the athlete you love safely back in play. To schedule an appointment, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 266-4007. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne mad ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's the... Uh... Go to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne mad ants in action. Get mad about blue. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far. So they're setting me up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education but also the experience. Parkview Sports Medicine, especially since I've been a pro, has been a place where my game has really been able to develop in multiple facets. Injury prevention, maintenance, physical therapy, weightlifting, agility work, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to have an NBA body. This is the place for me to go when I come back home and I need to get a workout in. Always welcome me back with open arms. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Both runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana and beyond. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. You know, she goes about her business, I go about mine, but uh, it's good. I just like being here. I love being here. It's uh, It's been good for me. Well, you know what, guys? It's been a great pleasure to talk to you here briefly at halftime. Look forward to spending a lot more of these times together. You know, Redeemer Radio, like I said before, great partner with Bishop Lewis High School, and so I can't thank you enough for that. And folks, if you didn't tune in at first, didn't catch your names, Jim Huth, principal here at uh, Bishop Lewis High School, and then Randy Hawkins, the new assistant principal. So thank you so much. Thank Back you up to you guys. Yeah, thanks for everything you guys do for our kids. Back up to you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks very much, Nick Gray, for that great interview with those two fine gentlemen. Uh, one and a half. But uh, anyway, <laughs> love talking to Jim Huth. He is just such such a wonderful asset for this school and, and this greater community. So um, good stuff there. All right, let's recap some things right now, ladies and gentlemen. 21-10 is your halftime score. The Bishop Lures Knights over the Homestead Spartans here. Now, again, Matt uh, Geely along with Sean McBride up here in the booth. 
Matt, when we talk about uh, things to come in the second half, obviously um, a lot of uh, football guys talk about that opening drive of the third quarter and how absolutely critical it is to set the tone in the second half. Um, Bishop Lewis has deferred, so they're getting the ball in the second quarter. What are you, what's your crystal ball telling you as far as that first opening drive for the, the Lures Knights? It's it's very much like Coach Lindsey to get back to the, the run game to start out, to try to get a couple first downs and get something going just to kind of get their legs back and get back into it. He's also been known to go out there and throw a, a quick early ball down the field. So it can go either way. But the important thing is, is just to have some success for the Knights on the other side. Coach Zolman and the Spartans, this is not his first time around the block. I mean, 15th season, a great record at Homestead. He knows what his team needs to do in order to be successful. And if, he, if I'm in the locker room and I'm Coach Zolman, I'm telling my defense, listen, we gave up two huge pass plays. But both of those plays, we were there. We were there. We had the coverage. We missed the tackle. And then on the other side for the Knights, it's yards after the contact. Both times are wide receivers doing a good job breaking tackles and getting to the end zone. So if you're Homestead, wrap them up. Get them down to the field, and if you're the Knights, try to keep on building off of where we're at and don't get ahead of yourself. There you go. Folks, we're going to go ahead and step out for another quick break. We're going to signal uh, Nick Gray down there. I see Father Andrew Budzinski is in the house. Maybe he's got some time over near the 50-yard line, Nick, in the stands. Uh, maybe we can grab him and talk about vocations at this point in time. And uh, we're going to step out for a little one-minute break and come right back. Stick around, folks. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. I mean, I always had my family behind me. I always had my team behind me. But to have staff that wanted the best for me and to get me feeling better the quickest was really reassuring. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. When you experience a sports injury, muscle, or joint pain, you want treatment right away. Parkview Ortho Express provides same-day orthopedic and sports injury care without referral or appointment, offering diagnostics, x-rays, the region's only body composition DEXA scan right inside of the Sport 1 Parkview Fieldhouse. Walk in Monday through Thursday, 7 to 7, Friday, 7 to 5, and Saturday, 8 to noon. For more information, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash ortho express. It's the comments. Comments from the from the sky. 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 But this is the first time I've been able to do this kind of more uh, complete understanding or view of your body. One of the things that's really important about this is that it's kind of legitimizing us as athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, 
reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Concussions. They're a concern for parents of athletes in any sport. That's why Parkview Sports Medicine is leading the way with the area's first concussion clinic. Our integrated sports medicine team utilizes an innovative, evidence-based approach to manage athletic-related head injuries in those 14 and older, providing comprehensive care to get the athlete you love safely back in play. To schedule an appointment, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 266-4007. Reaching higher. Pushing further, Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Get mad about Blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne Mad Ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's the... to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ants in action. Get mad about blue. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far, so they're setting you up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing, and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education, but also the experience. Harvey's. 158 yards in that big touchdown pass with a nice throw by the other quarterback who's played in this game, and that is Goody. Goody went four of six for 84 yards with the touchdown. On the other side, for the Knights at quarterback position, it was Norman Kanapke. He's been efficient, and he's put up some huge numbers. Six of seven, 163 yards, and two touchdowns. He's been just about perfect for Lures. And as far as perfection goes, you can't look farther than Jordan Presley. One reception for 59 yards, that was a touchdown. Also seven carries for 68 yards and a score. And to round out the stats, can't go without talking about wide receiver Jay McJohnson. He had three receptions for 79 yards and a touchdown. All right, very good. Thank you very much for that. Thanks, Charlie, for getting those uh, numbers together. We'll talk about game-ending uh, stats at the end of the contest here. And speaking of contests, remember, next week, ladies and gentlemen, on Redeemer Radio, Bishop Dwenger takes on Homestead at Homestead. 7 o'clock is our start time. Tailgate talk starts at 6 p.m. with our game of the week starting right after 6.55. We'll be coming to you live from Homestead Field as the Bishop Dwinger Saints take on the Homestead Spartans. Let's take a look around the league tonight and around Northeast Indiana as we go down to the sidelines with Nick Gray, who's got scores and updates from around the area. Nick, take it away. Well, welcome back to the sidelines, everybody. Right now, Bishop Dwinger leads Southside 27-0. Uh, Concordia's playing over at Snyder, and actually Snyder's winning 10 to nothing. So it's kind of an odd score for me. Normally I'm used to Snyder scoring a few more points. Northside's out of Carroll, and Carroll's leading that matchup 30 to 8. Wayne is beating Northrop right now 28 to 7. Columbia City's up on Belmont 14 to 0. New Haven's over at DeKalb. That game is tied, guys, 21 to 21. Wow. Leo's uh, beating Norwell 25 to 0, and Woodland's beating Heritage right now 13 to 0. The only other game I have right at this moment is uh, Angola at Jimtown. Angola leads three to nothing. Hmm. You know, Angola's coming off that big win against Leo last week too, Nick. They're making some noise up there in the corner, huh? They sure are. Wow. We may see them in the playoffs. That's right. Yeah, Jimtown's known to be a great program year in and year out. And oh, yeah. No surprise that's a defensive battle there because the Jimtown Jimmies have a strong defense every single year. And what a facility. Yeah. You know, oh my goodness, they know how to do it up right down there at Jimtown. Mm -hmm. So, well, both teams are back out on the field right now preparing for the second half of action. We're going to check in with our uh, sideline reporter, uh, Mr. Eric Pete. Eric, we talked a little bit earlier about what you saw from the sideline perspective down there, uh, who's hitting who, what looks great, and what looks does, uh, you know, what needs improving. Uh, what is your takeaway of the first half in general? Uh, 
about five seconds left, throwing it into the flats and letting the time run out. Sean, it was just huge because that, that could have easily been a touchdown, and instead it's nothing, and they're heading into the locker room down by 11 points. It's especially huge for Lures because last week against Wayne, they gave up a touchdown in the final two minutes of the first half, and then they gave up the clincher, the touchdown, the final two minutes of the second half. So that was one thing I was watching coming into this game. How are they going to finish out the halves? And they could not have finished out that first half any better by going down, scoring the touchdown to go up 21-10, and then coming up with a huge defensive stop down just uh, shy of the end zone. And you're down on the sidelines right now, Eric. You're, you're spot on with that analysis. When these guys came out of the locker room, uh, obviously uh, being up 21-10 compared to 21-17, there's a little more giddy up in that step. They're still fired up. They're still raring to go because they know also that they get the ball to start this third quarter. Absolutely. And uh, as you guys mentioned earlier in the broadcast, they also know that Homestead came back from 20-3 to deficit last week yeah. and uh, took the lead in the fourth quarter, and then they scored the game winner, game winner with 10 seconds left. So this, this game is far from over. There's a lot of time left. And uh, Bishop Lures is appearing confident, but not overconfident right now. There you go. All right. Well, folks, we're going to step out for our final 30-second break. When we come back, we're going to have the kickoff to the third quarter. Stick around, folks. This is SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Runners are running. Play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business. It's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, and Big Eye Fish that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana and beyond. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Your score, the Lures Knights on top of the Homestead Spartans. We are moments away from third quarter action. The halftime is drawing to a close, and we're getting ready for some exciting football here. Along with Matt Geely, I'm Sean McBride up here in the box. On the sidelines, we've got Eric Pete and Nick Gray. Stats provided by Charles Robert McBride tonight. And uh, a beautiful night here, Matt. i got to tell you, this is just fantastic. I think we've got a heat wave on the way here in northeast Indiana, so this might be one of the um, you know cooler nights coming up in the next five to six days, but we'll take it, you know. And, uh, and it's a great, uh, a great atmosphere out here. The, uh, the stands under the press box are nearly full. Homestead perennially travels very very well yep. you know lots of support out there mm -hmm. in the 04 and um, and just what a great night of football it's been when we look at the penalty situation this has been relatively a, a very clean game in yep. my mind yeah you penalties know. and turnovers you've right. seen very little to well no turnovers on either side and the penalties have been kept to a minimum too and for lures that's huge because any chance that you can give homestead to get back in this game they're going to take it and they're going to run with it because all they need is just a break through a little bit then they can bust this thing wide open and get right back in the game so as long as lures does a good job taking care of the turnovers taking care of the penalties and just kind of managing this game along they have a good chance here to come out with the win they are up 21 10 and preparing to receive the ball homestead preparing to kick this one well, that's colin crandall he has a field goal on the night and he's at the 40, and the ball is in the air. High end over end kick. It looks like it's going to go to Gaston on the uh, far side. Running towards the middle, looking for the wedge. He's found it. He's broken through. He's getting attacked from the side and behind. Gets it nearly to midfield as Gaston turns on the Jets and gives a short field to the offense. Gaston goes about six steps to his left, kind of jogging along. And then right when he sees the seam, it's the fastest burst you could ever imagine as he just finds the seam, hits the hole, and boom, he's off to the race. So a nice start here, good return for the Knights as Kanaki is now on the field and ready to lead this team down the field. It's about a 35-yard return there for Gaston. Puts him first and 10 at the 45-yard line. So 55 yards to go for the Bishop Lures Knights and a score. Let's see what they can do on this, the opening drive of the third quarter. Kanaki is in the shotgun. Single setback. Two wideouts to the left side. Here's a snap. Little draw play. Give to Presley. Bounces it out right. He's got room. Running north and south into the linebacker. Cutting across field. He's going at the 30. The 20. He's down at the 10. He can't be caught. Touchdown, but it might be coming back. Yeah, there's a flag right at the line of scrimmage, and if I had to guess, it is going to be a hold on the Knights on the outside, and it is. 
the individual effort there by Jordan Presley, I know it's not, not going to count. It's not going to be on... In the, in the final stat sheet, but the way he's able to make something out of nothing, and then if I had a dollar for every time that he cut back across the field wow. when nobody else knew he was going to do it and get to the end zone, I'd be a very rich individual. But it's this is one of those sudden change, adversity type of situations for the Knights as they have the big play, but it's coming all the way back. You just got to get back in and just start again. Normally they talk about holding being a 10-yard penalty. This one is going to go for 65 yards yep. because they're going to mark it 10 yards from the spot of the foul, which was the uh, line of scrimmage. So they mark it back to the 35, and it takes away a huge, huge 55-yard run by Presley for a touchdown. So that was a very, very costly penalty against the Knights. And we had just talked a moment ago about how clean the play had been so far in the first half. Mm -hmm. All right. First and 20 for the Knights from their own 35. Gaston in the backfield now. Here's a snap. Give to Gaston. Counter through the middle. He finds some room. Gets about uh, 10 before he is stopped up and pushed back. Great movement up front by this nucleus for the Knights. Sweeney, Suloff, Rectanus, Derek, and Garrettson leading the way. Great push. That's back-to-back -back plays. They're getting great movement up front. And those linebackers for Homestead are shooting hard, and they're falling downfield as fast as they can. So all you need to do is get into that second level and make a cut. And these fast running backs for the Knights can get into Homestead territory. A nice gain here, second and 11. Rectanus, the mad titan, checks in. He is 6'3", 304 pounds. His name makes me think of a Marvel superhero, so that's why I called him the Mad Titan. <laughs> <laughs> on second and 11, here's a give. End around by uh, Gaston. Tries to find some lane. Shakes one tackle. Cannot shake two and three. Gets pushed out of bounds. That's going to be a tackle for loss. Ten yellow goldish helmets on that tackle for Homestead as they were able to get to the edge. Nice job setting the edge by the defensive end, Kai Johnson, as he was able to kind of force the play to the sideline and keep Gaston corralled. And then everybody jumped on top. Third and long here. See... You might not be able to get it all in one chunk here. Maybe look for a screen pass, a rocket screen, something short, and see if they can get an, a little extra chunk out of these athletes. On third and 13, Kanapke's in the shotgun. Two wideouts on the short side, working off the left hash mark. Here's a snap. He's looking left, looking over the middle. Has plenty of time. Got all plenty day. of time. Goes right. Outlet pass. He's got his man hit in the backfield and dropped for another two-yard loss. That's Johnson on the reception. Plenty of time there by Kanapke. That's because Homestead only brought three up front, and they dropped everybody else back in coverage. So he was surveying the entire field, looking for any type of pocket. Homestead does a good job. Everybody's staying home, knowing their assignment, and they take advantage of that big holding penalty against the Knights and force a punt. So the opening drive of the third quarter stalls off of a huge penalty against the Knights and stout defense against uh, or with Homestead. And now they are in to punt the ball away. Ben Jennings, number 10, in to punt this one back. He is wearing number 10. Back deep is Cam for Homestead. He is dangerous. Cam Shannon, number 10. Here's a high punt. Takes a Bishop Lewers bounce and will be stopped up in the mid-30s, maybe the 32-yard line. Jennings had to make an athletic play there to field the snap and get the punt off before Homestead was able to get in and make and block it as he was just able to get it off in time. So nice play there by Jennings to get the ball back on the Homestead side of the field. Well, so far, the battle of field position is being won by Bishop Lewers. They started their drive on the 45. Now Homestead will start on their 32. But will the result be the same let's find out is Archbold back there no it is Goody number 12 the quarterback for Homestead he's in the shotgun and it's going to be a read option give to the tailback he has some room gets into the linebacker core close to the 40 yard line tackle made there by number 23 for the Knights which is Contrail Ash Jr. And it's interesting, you know, it seems like the Homesteads had better luck on the ground game with Goody in that quarterback, and he's known more as the thrower of the two. Right. But it looks like Lures is trying to respect his arm as you have to, and he came in last game in the second half and really gave Homestead a spark. He's going to try to do it again. Hardwick with an eight-yard run, brings up second and two. Again, give to the tailback, gets north, and will have enough for a first down. And I believe, yes, that is, again, Hardwick, number 26, on the carry. Takes it out to the 44, and a fresh set of downs coming up for the Spartans. Jack Sweeney makes the tackle there for the Knights, but not before a first down by Homestead. And here they go, driving down the field again as they, they work quick. But as 
as I'm guessing they talked about in the locker room, it's all about taking what Lures has given you. It's those six to eight yard little throws into the zone and those nice little carries, it can really build. Here's a snap on first down. Here's a quick hitch thrown out to the flats. Breaks out of one tackle and drives his uh, drags his tackler down. That is Taylor, number 89, with a nice reception and good yards after the catch. Another first down for Homestead. The 6'2 senior making an impact here in this game as he's able to make a nice catch and get some yards after the contact and get upfield after slipping out of one tackle. And now Homestead gets in Lures territory. Ball resting at the 43-yard line on first and 10. Homestead now putting it together. A very nice drive. Here's a screen left. Trying to break it outside is number two. He gets to the edge. Finally, a flag comes out. Another flag <laughs> comes out. It's like the, the back line judge for the referee wanted to show off his arm there and chuck his flag from about 40 yards away. So it's going to be a hold on the outside. Josh Dipple doing a good job trying to shed the blocker and make the play, but he was tackled to the ground. And so with that, I'm assuming we're going to be pushing Homestead back here. Mitch Wesner was the intended receiver that time on the wheel, uh, well, pitch uh, screen out there on the far side. And yes, this one is coming back. That's going to be a hold against Homestead, and they'll take him back to the 50-yard line. Looks like we have an injured Bishop Lures Knight down on the field. Is I have yet to see, and that might be Josh Dippold over there, number seven for the Knights, as he looks to be laboring a little bit and immediately the medical staff for Lures goes out and starts stretching that leg. So you don't want to assume, but you have to imagine maybe it's a cramp situation. Yeah. yeah. Well, folks, Redeemer Radio would like to thank Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for their continual support of our Catholic high school sports coverage in Fort Wayne. That's Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. So they are attending to the night on the far side of the field. It does appear to be a cramp, and it is number seven, Dippold, who's walking off the field under his own power. And now the blue water bottles are being passed around to all the players. It's time to get a splash. Again, it's not exactly cool out there. It's still a nice warm evening here in northeast Indiana. We'll get an updated temperature out there on the field. Last update we had was 82 degrees. It's a little bit less than that now, but not by much. And these guys are working hard. 21-10 is your score here in the third quarter. Bishop Lures up over the Homestead Spartans. Spartans are driving. It's going to be first down. They need to get down to the 34-yard line. The ball is at the 50, first and 16. Here's a snap. Play action. Looks to throw over the middle on the crossing route. It is Kazai with a great catch down to the 35. Knights secondary respecting the arm of Goody as both of the corners and, and, and the free safety were kind of worried about the two guys running the deep routes and kind of let the under under throw happen and because of that Homestead gets a nice chunk of that first down back after the holding penalty second and short now. That's going to be a gain of I think around 14 so that's going to bring up second and two for Homestead. Here's a snap and it's going to be a give through the middle Hardwick again on the carry and that should be enough for a Homestead first down. Nice run there at the middle and good blocking up front by Robert McCoy, Evan Creary, and John Bond is able to get into that second level and get just enough for the first down. Knights make a substitution, bringing in some fresh bodies as Jack Sweeney checks into the game at defensive line to join Gabe Hendricks out there on the edges. You got Krieger and you got Kamari Harris. Harris, a Journal Gazette preseason player of the year finalist. Looking to make an impact here on first down. First and 10 from the 31-yard line. Man in motion now. Here's a snap. High snap. Quarterback decides to keep it and just fall forward. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a little shy, but really a bad snap that time, and it just did not allow Homestead to, to uh, develop that play. Yeah, that bad snap hurts there because it looked like it was going to be a jet, jet sweep to the left side, and it was wide open, but with the snap being over the quarterback's head, he was unable to catch it, come down, and hand the ball off. So he did the smart thing, keep it himself, don't have the turnover and just take the loss. Second and 11 now from the 32-yard line. Here's a snap. He's looking left, throws left out to the flats. It's caught, and he is stuck right away. Great composure to bring that ball down. That was Kazai on the catch. Kazai on the catch. Johnson, Jay McJohnson on the tackle for the Knights. Good coverage there. He's able to close the gap quickly. Nice catch there by Kazai to make the play. And, but, man, you look at this. It's another third and long situation. Yep. And so here we go. It is going to be third and uh, a long seven short eight for Homestead as they come up to the line. Again, no real huddle by the Spartans. 
But Goody barks out the orders, and here we go on third and long. Here's a snap. He rolls to his right. He looks right. He fires right into the flats, and it is caught. It is caught. Wow, Taylor with a tremendous grab that time. Brings it down, but he will be shy of the first down, it appears, by about three yards. Great break on the ball there by Cameron Hedgecock. He was about a half second away from intercepting that ball and taking it the other way as he made a good read on the ball and stops him fourth and short here. Homestead moving quick. They're going for it. Fourth and uh, long two, short three for Homestead. They check off and look back to the uh, line. The sidelines for the play. You gotta be careful for a hard count here that's, if you're a defensive lineman. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yep. You got Hendricks and Sweeney, two big boys up front here trying to stop them as they move around. Here comes the man in motion. Here it is. Play action. Looks to throw. Going deep around the right side. No! Knocked away! Knocked away. No flag! Tremendous safety help coming over and knocking the ball away are the Bishop Lures Knights. The drive stalls and Lures takes over. Ramon Anderson makes a, a fantastic play on that ball and Taylor has his number all night. He has been, Anderson's been battling, battling, battling and Taylor has gotten the better of the battle to that point. But Anderson says, you know what? I'm not going to get bitter. I'm going to get better. He goes up, makes a huge play and gets the ball back to the Knights. Wow, that was a tremendous defensive effort there by Bishop Lures preserving that 21-10 lead and now the offense is on the field. This is their second drive here in the third quarter. We've got 5-20 remaining in the third. Again, your score 21-10. You can feel that momentum on the Knights sideline right now. Let's see if they can put together a drive and maybe start putting this game away. Kanapke with play action. Looks across the middle. It is caught on the crossing route. Getting to the outside is Johnson tripped up just shy of the 50-yard line. Have a day, Jay McJohnson. He has made his impact known from the second quarter on, and you can just, you can just see he's just getting open, and he just the, the confidence is just, you can just see it coming off of him, and Knights move close to midfield. First and 10 at the 47-yard line for the Knights. They're moving right to left on your radio dial. Fresh set of downs. Kanapke in the shotgun. Single setback. Trips to the right side. Here's a snap. They're pulling. It's going to be the uh, counter tray. Breaks it outside. Presley trying to find something there. Not much. He will get maybe a yard. Still not into Homestead territory. So again, good job by that uh, by the front line by Homestead to recognize what they were trying to accomplish there because um, Presley had to bounce it outside immediately. Yeah, three big seniors up front for the, for the Spartans, Leighton, Harris, and Zeke, able to immediately kind of corral Jordan Presley, not let those two backside guard and tackle of the Knights pull and, and get upfield. Second and eight after the gain of two. Here's a snap. Oh, We've got flag. a flag. I think we had some motion. Yeah, it looks like it. It is going to be a motion penalty against Bishop Lewis, so instead of facing second and eight, it will be a second and 13. A reminder, folks, next week, we are going to see the Homestead Spartans again two weeks in a row. This time they will be at home against the Bishop Dwinger Saints. I will be there along with Coach Corey Kitchen as their color analyst for Bishop Dwinger. And Joey Cologne, former gold helmet wearer, back on the sidelines for the Saints. Tailgate talk at 6, game time 7 o'clock next Friday night. Second and long now for Bishop Lures. And here's a screen, and Gaston has it. He's got a blocker. He's on the road, down to the 40, and wrangled out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. That will be enough for Bishop Lewer's first down. You said he had a blocker, and he sure did. It was the big 6'2", Peter Suloff. As he comes right, I mean, that is a left guard's dream. You got, a, you got about a 5'6", cornerback on you and you're just going downfield and making a great open field block not holding moving the chains great job into homestead territory now inside the 40 here's a snap and a give to the tailback that's presley left side gets around the edge and knocked out of bounds inside the 35 yard line down to about the 33 you can start to see these long drives the Knights are putting together kind of wear on that front That's for Homestead. exactly right. As they're yeah. able, even when it looks like Homestead maybe has them corralled, Lures is still getting about four or five yards on every single carry, and yeah. that just starts to, to wear away on you as you continue to give up yards. We'll call that a gain of uh, five or six, bringing up second and four for Bishop Lures. And it looks like Kanapke had an audible there. Taking his time. Here's a snap, play action, rolling right, rolling right, throwing deep, and it's overthrown that time. 
streaking down the field was number 12, Hedgecock. He had a step. It was just overthrown. Yeah, that's not the that's not the last time we're going to hear Cameron Hedgecock had a step on somebody. Yeah. He's been known to be the deep threat for the Knights all season long, and he did have a step, and both receivers were really wide open. And that's the first ball we've seen Kanapi kind of airmail a little bit, which is to be expected. He's been throwing it a lot, and he's been very accurate so far tonight. So he's I'm going to give him one every sure. once in a while. Oh, yeah. Again, they burn that down. That brings up third and four. Kind of helps having those short yarded situations because you can take a shot yep, downfield so like right. that. Yep, the playbook is open. There's a big number two there in the backfield that I wouldn't mind seeing get the ball here <laughs> if I'm a Bishop Lewis offensive lineman. On third and four from the 33 yard line. Gasson in motion. They fake it to him. Give to Presley. Left side. He's through. And he's off to the races. And he is going to score a touchdown. Jordan Presley, thank you for making me look very smart up here up in the booth. As he was able, they, they, talk, they took Gaston in motion away from us. They faked the handoff to him. They go counter center play to the left side. Pulling for the Knights was Will Derrick, and he leads them up through the hole. And when you see Jordan Presley getting to that second level, you might as well say goodbye. The press box swami, Matt Geely, calls it in a 32-yard run. Off tackle left by Presley and six more points on the board here for the Bishop Lures Knights. The snap, the hold, the kick, all three are good. Another point on the board. 28-10 is the score here with 4.39 to go in the third quarter. We're going to step out for a 30-second break. The Bishop Lewis Knights are over the Homestead Spartans. Stick around, folks. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Welcome back into Lures Field, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sean McBride. He is Matt Geely. And the score now is 28-10. Bishop Lures on top of the Homestead Spartans on the back of Jordan Presley, who just ran rough shot through the defense for a 32-yard score, upping the advantage for the Knights to 28-10. So, Matt, when we look at the opening uh, salvo here in the third quarter, both drives stall initially mm -hmm. for uh, both teams here. But that second drive mm -hmm. created a lot of confidence. Again, they stopped Homestead on fourth down. Yep. That transferred, that Momo, as the Godfather used to call it, transferred to the offense, and it really showed on that drive. Well, we saw Jordan Presley break one to start the second half that got called back by the penalty. So you knew that he's just back there. He's just a big play waiting to happen. Every time he touches that football, his third touchdown on the day is he's putting huge numbers up in the stat book. I'm going to have to get our statistician another pa piece of paper because he's going <laughs> to start running out of room. Yep. The kickoff here, Cam Shannon trying to find something happening for uh, Homestead, and it looks like he might be doing it. He's running one back. He's at the 50, the 40. He is going all the way. He's got one man to beat. He gassed and can't get to him, and he's going to run back for a score. I don't see any yellow flags on the play, so I think this one is going to count for the Spartans as they answer a score with a score and put a big exclamation part point on what momentum Lures did have. Let's uh, go down to the sidelines and check in with Eric Pete. Well, just a deflating play for Lures fans. And uh, as Matt mentioned earlier in the broadcast, this is the second straight game that Lures has given up a kickoff for a touchdown. The one last week against Wayne came right after Lures took a 7-0 lead. Wayne tied the ball game and Lures would never lead again. So we're hoping the Knights can put this one behind them and recover that Momo they just had. In for the PAT for Homestead is Crandall. The kick is up, and it is good. So a huge, huge play by the Homestead special teams. Sparks it. It is now 28-17. Bishop Lures has an 11-point advantage with 4.20 to go here in the third quarter. We're going to go ahead and keep things right here during this little timeout and kind of discuss, okay, so 
the heavyweights are trading blows now. Yep. Okay, haymakers are getting thrown. Mm-hmm. And so, as a, from a coaching perspective, yep. yeah, you've been on these sidelines. Uh-huh. What is Coach Lou, what is uh, you know Coach Lindsay? what are they telling these guys right now? This is known as gut check time because okay. it's a matter of what have we learned from last week to this week. This is the exact same situation that they were in last week. They, gave, they score, they give up the kick return touchdown, just as Eric says, and then it just all goes downhill from there. So... Where are my seniors? Where are my leaders? Who is going to take over this game, be the voice on that sideline and say, hey guys, we're fine. We're, we're having success. We're gonna continue to have success. We just need to get back to Lures football. That's it. All right. Well, the timeout is over and both squads coming back out. The re- uh, re- uh, receiving team for Bishop Lures will have Presley and Gaston back deep along with Johnson. Three men back there. As Crandall, the freshman kicker, prepares to kick from the middle of the field at the 40-yard line. He'll be kicking left to right on your radio dial. Last Very time, yeah, big cool. big return for Gaston. Last time That's right. that Homestead had a kick. Gave him a short field. And I'm looking back there. I don't want to kick it to Johnson. He's on fire. Gaston had a yeah. good one, and then it's Jordan Presley. Yep. Kamari Harris better be ready again, that linebacker <laughs> yeah. on the front line. He might get another pooch kick right at him. Yep, could be a high and short kick here. Let's see what happens. Puts his leg into it gingerly, and yeah, it's taken by an up back and just takes a knee at about the 34-yard line. Yep, nice job there by Contral S. Jr. To, to catch the ball, and you know, don't want to make a big mistake and try to run it and fumble the ball or whatnot because you're not used to returning kicks. So That's you right. take the field position, you take your knee, and you're like, all right, offense, let's get back out there and let's get to work. And, and for the Lures, uh, the team out there on offense, still not bad shape here. You know, they're at the 34-yard right. line. It could be much, much worse. Let's recap it for you. 28-17 is your score. 4-17 remaining in the third quarter. Bishop Bluers Knights have the ball. First and 10 at their own 34-yard line. Driving right to left on your radio dial. Norman Kanapke from the shotgun. Gaston in the backfield with him. Here's a snap. Play action. He looks to throw. That was Presley going over the middle. Tries to get Gaston and overthrown that time. So Knights come out and take a shot on first down, a little play action to Presley, and then they had three receivers going streaking down the field. Gaston was one-on-one coverage, ball was a little high, but that's a good throw by Kanapi. You want to put it in a spot where only Gaston can get it and no one else can go up and pick it off. Yeah, Taj Wilson was there, but it was a, uh, a good throw placed accurately, just a little too much on that one. It's the first time we've called Wilson's name tonight, and that's a good thing if you're a cornerback. That means that they're not picking on you and you're playing good defense. That's right. Here's a give to Presley. He gets hit in the backfield and driven out of bounds. And that was a violent rap by Homestead, and the faithful do not like the way he was brought down out of bounds. It was uh, it was pretty it was pretty late. It was on the Lewis sideline, so I imagine that there's a couple of coaches maybe asking for an explanation there, but you know, now you got third and long, and you can kind of feel that momentum kind of go back to the other side. That's right. Big down here. Don't want to make a, a bad play worse. Take care of the ball here. See what you can get. Third and 14 now for the Bishop Lures Knights. Here's the snap. Kanapke looks to throw. Has time. Steps up. Steps out. Starts to run. Gets to the sidelines. Cannot. Oh, he might have gotten a first down. He's really close. A nice crackback block there by Jay McJohnson to try to free him. As looks like. They're trying to decide it. I think it's going to be about a yard short. And so a, oh, I think it might be inches. Yeah, oh, let's there, it. It oh there it is. First down. Wow. That lure sideline was begging for another yard there, and they didn't even need it. So <laughs> just move those yeah. chains and a new set of downs. What a just a savvy play there. Oh, no, no, oh, no. Now, now we have a, a situation. Minute. Okay, the white hat clearly he said, stayed at a first down. But the chains have yet to move. And now it looks like they're going to measure which is interesting. It is the far hash, I'll give him that, but yeah. it's not very um, normal for you to single first down and then decide to bring it back and try to measure it. I would call it sketchy. I would very agree with sketchy that. sketchy right now. All right, 28 to 17 is your score. 357 remaining here in the third quarter. Bishop Lures on top. Critical placement of the chains here. Uh, oh, he's inches short. Just inches what short. Is, I, that's just, that's really. Yeah. That's. They're lucky that the chains didn't move when he singled first down, or else they would have had no choice but That's to right. give it a first down. But since the chains did not move, they yep. measure it. Now it's literally fourth and, I would say, half an inch at most. Yeah. And uh, I would imagine we're going to keep the, the offense on the field here if you're the Knights, and you got big, big, 
big Ben Rectanis at that's center, right. and that's just that's a that's a half a step. Is all is all you're telling you off the line. If you could take a half a step forward, we get the first down. Allen Jackson steps in. He's going to be on the wing on the right. Lures only run shotgun all year long, so this is going to be from the gun. On fourth and inches, they try the hard uh, count. Yeah, they got the left tackle for the Knights. He kind of bobbed his head up, so that's going to be a tough penalty. Now we're going to see the punt team come on the field. Yep, that's going against Bishop Lures, so the hard count really bit him right in the tail feathers, and uh, now the punt team does have to come on. So from fourth and inches, it's going to be fourth and five. And uh, this drive is going to stall for Bishop Lures. Just a crazy turn of events there. Uh, you, you think, can, well, can be it, first down or not, he makes a fantastic play. He pulls it down, he sees it running late, and he takes off running. And he was so close, and man, those coaches won another yard on that, on that spot. And the first down not given. Here's the punt by Jennings. Nice punt. High end over end punt that time by Jennings. Takes a Lures bounce right into Shannon's hands. He's hit immediately and dropped near the 23-yard line. So again, even if the drive can't continue, the battle of field position is favoring Bishop Lures at this point. Again, their drive started back at the 32. This one for uh, Homestead is going to start at their 23 with 347 remaining here in the third quarter. Again, 28-17 is your score. Bishop Lures on top. Now, let's see. Is this going to be Jake Archbold or is it going to be Goody? It looks like Goody back there. The sophomore quarterback wearing number 12. Man in motion, here's a snap, jet sweep, left side. He's trying to find some room. He does get north and south, waiting for some blocks. Allen Jackson finally driving him out of bounds, but he does have enough for a Homestead first down. That was number five for the Spartans. Aiden Vashon, the senior 5'8 wide receiver, coming in motion. It looks like we have another flag on oh, the yeah. field. So on after the far a, side. Like we might have jinxed it here in the first half with a pretty clean game. We have quite a bit of laundry out there. Yeah, we do. And it's in the uh, flats on the backfield. So, again, if somebody was pulling, trying to stretch that play out, that is typically holding. And they are marching off 10, and there's the hold call against Homestead. So they dug themselves a little bit of a hole there. As an offensive lineman, nothing frustrated me more than a first down holding penalty to start no. a drive because it just feels like forever to get back to those sticks. And it's important that you don't try to go for it all in one play here. You still have a full, fresh set of downs. Right. You can kind of pick away out of here if you're the Spartans. Ball is on the 14-yard line. Here's Goody from the shotgun. And it's going to be a play action throw over the middle. Grabbed out of the air. And did he lose the ball? It looked like he may have lost possession but came down yep. with it Got anyway. It that is Kazai with an amazing catch near the 30-yard line. Good catch and run there by Kazai. A nice tackle there by Ramon Anderson in the secondary. So Homestead gets all of the holding penalty back and a lot more. Second down here coming up. Call it second and a long three coming up for Homestead as the ball is now resting at the 31-yard line. Goody looks to throw, pumps, double move, going deep. He's got, got a man. Him. Oh, just out. Out of the stretched hands of his intended receiver, that's Little, who could not bring it in. Little has shown all game long he's been the deep threat for the Spartans, and we talked about this in the first half. They were doing a ton of under, under throws, six to eight yards, just taking what Lures gets, gives them, and then we knew they'd take a shot deep eventually, and that time it did work out. They're just unable to make the connection. Remember that play, because we're going to see that again later Oh, they're coming game. back to it. You bet they are. 28-17 is your score here with 2.46 remaining in the third. We've got a timeout on the field as the officials come over to the sidelines. And we might have it. Oh, they're, 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 they're going to reset clock the clock a little situation. bit to 2.56 apparently. All right, well, let's reset. Okay. Third and a long two now, maybe three coming up for Homestead. After the incomplete pass. Goody barks out the signal to his line. Single setback, spread formation. Here's a snap. On third down, throw to the flats. Left side, he's got his man. That's little. They go right back to him, and it's a good catch. That play has been open all day long, and it pays off when you get those third and shorts, which Homestead has had trouble getting into. But once yeah. they do, it's much easier, of course, to pick up the first down. A nice little hooker out there by little. Finds that little 
little hole in the defense, makes the catch, moves the chains. And, you know, they've been giving these guys seven yards off the line, if yep. not ten. And, mm -hmm. and, of course, yeah, that's that's what they're able to give up here. On first and ten, here's a give to the tailback, trying to find some room, and he's smothered by the front line. Dragging tacklers with him is number 26 for the Homestead Spartans, and that's Hardwick. Hardwick with the run, Alan Jackson with the tackle. He's one of the leading tacklers on this Knights defense. And it's important that you don't let them get the running game going, too, because then nothing's working and you can't stop anything if you're the Knights. Yep. And with Little, to go back to it, you have to give him cushion because he is such a deep threat. So he's got give and take. Here's a give up the middle. Looking for something. Again, it's Hardwick on the, on the, uh, the give. He's whistled dead. Can't bring him down, but he is whistled dead after a big scrum out to the 45. That's going to bring up third and short then for the Homestead Spartans. Yeah, a couple more yards there gained by Hardwick. He's done a really good job staying in the hole and getting north and south, not trying to bust it outside too early and losing yards. Everything he does is going forward, yep. which gives him a couple more yards each time, third and short. Third and two coming up for the Homestead Spartans. Man in motion across the line, jet sweep. He's got it looking for some room, gets hit. Oh, gets popped on a second hit there. Wow. He's going to be dropped. Uh, behind the sticks, but forward progress should give him enough for a first down. I really want to get a number on who that was. I want to say it was Josh Dippold who came flying out of nowhere. That was the 765 train is what it was. Yeah, it was. Wow. It will be enough for a first down. No measurement needed that time. But that was uh, Vashon on the jet sweep, and he felt that one for sure. Yeah. Homestead able to get just enough to move those chains and keep this drive alive as it's been exactly what they need. It keeps their defense off the field and they're finding some success running the ball and throwing it in the air both ways. Just over a minute to go here in the third quarter. First and ten for Homestead looking to throw on first. Oh, it's hit at the line and incomplete. So they burn the first down throw and that's going to bring up second and ten for the Spartans. It's been a great strategy by Coach Causey, the defensive coordinator of Bishop Bluers Knights, telling his big defense alignment up front to get those hands in the air all game long because these short throws that's one way that you can help out your secondary and help out your linebackers is it makes the windows different for the quarterback to try to throw to and you get some batted balls second and ten now for the spartans here's a snap and it's going to be a read option oh the ball is on the ground quarterback decided to keep it i think it's a turnover i think lures has it they do first turnover of the game and it comes at a big moment as Krager is able to jump on the ball. Nice job there, Jacob Crable to jump Krager to jump on the ball and get it back for the Knights. A costly turnover for Homestead as they were just starting to find some success down the field. But just like that, ball back to the Knights. Again, that drive started on the 23-yard line. They were just shy of midfield and making things happen. The read option did not pan out. Again, we've talked about it. You know, Goody being the passer, yeah. not the option quarterback. Yep. And uh, and that really, yeah, that was costly. And now Bishop Lures is on the field again with offense. Can they make the turnover count? Let's find out with 58 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Kanapke in the shotgun. Resets the slot. Here's a snap. Play action. Looks to throw. Slant. He's got his man. That's Johnson. Over the middle. He is gone. Look at the Jets. He is in for a touchdown. Unbelievable. Jay McJohnson, you are out of this world tonight. I don't know what you ate for breakfast. I'm not sure what they served you in the cafeteria at lunchtime. But whatever it was, that man is on fire tonight. Every time he catches the ball, it's a big play. And he has another one tonight for Lures. A 45-yard gash by Bishop Lures and another six points on the board. Eric Pete, what do you have for us, sir? Boy, that was pure speed by Johnson there. And the impressive thing for the Knights, every game they've had a different receiver stepping up. Last week it was Moore, Janarian Moore with two touchdowns. Today it's Johnson. They're really taking the pressure off of Justin Gaston and Jordan Presley and showing that this Lures team is a multifaceted, multi-talented offense. 35 to 17 is your score in the waning moments of the third quarter. We're going to step out for a 30 second break. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM.
Welcome back into Lures Field, ladies and gentlemen. The score, 35-17. The Bishop Lures Knights over the Homestead Spartans with 51 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. A huge, huge strike from Kanapke to Johnson. Again, Matt, we talked about Johnson. I've been talking about him all night. Uh, man, if, if there were stickers on helmets, he would have about 50 of them on there just for tonight's performance alone. Yeah, he's going to sleep really good tonight once he gets home after this game because it's he's just... 40-yard dashes every single play down the field with the ball going to the end zone. And it's been every facet of, of Lure's game working for them. Connor Drake with that extra point, 10 for 10 now on the year. Adding that extra point each time, it just helps you gain a little bit more momentum and get even farther out of reach. The Lure's kickoff trickles out of bounds. So the question is, will they take the spot or have them re-kick? Again, a 45-yard strike from Kanapke to Johnson puts them up 35 to 17. And really, really just a tremendous outing by the Bishop Lures Knights tonight on really both sides of the ball. As Eric Pete talked about earlier on in the contest, this Homestead squad is the most prolific in the SAC so far this year, bar none. Mm -hmm. And to hold these guys to 17 points here going into the fourth quarter, that is a testament. And then to see this offense uh, not only be that, that high-powered, but able to put drives together and keep the offense for Homestead off the field. Uh, so Bishop Lure is really uh, clicking on a lot of cylinders. Yeah, this might be one of the most up-for-grabs SACs I've seen in a long time as, I mean, between Homestead, DeWanger, Snyder, Carroll, Lures. I mean, everybody can get beat on any night, and anybody can beat anybody, and it makes for really exciting football. Here comes the second kick, and this one is, again, going to go out of bounds. If I'm Lures, I'm not mad at this at all. There's nothing wrong with what's going on at the moment. You just gave up a kick return for a touchdown. You don't want to kick it deep. Yep. And if I'm just if Homestead wants to keep having you re-kick it and move it back, eventually you're going to either have to kick it in bounds or Homestead's going to finally take the spot. Yep. But I wouldn't be surprised to see another squib kick here. So they, uh, they tried it again from the 35. This one moves back now to the 30. And not calling him out, but again, it's uh, John Pudzianski, uh on the kicking responsibilities for Bishop Lures. Yeah, Coach Charay down there, the special teams coach for the Knights, and I think it's, I think he's just repeating over and over again. We're going to squib kick on that left side and try yep. to keep it right next to that sideline. So far, he's done a great job. One of these is going to stick in. Line drive shot, and again, that one's going to go out of bounds. It, it looks bad, and it, it, it feels bad if you're a fan, but... I can't be, I mean, we're, we're getting to the point now where you want to kick it in bounds, but right. it's not the worst thing in the world. I just have to keep repeating that. We're just going to move it back in another five, and uh, we're going to line it up again. And I think, you know, the, the folks in the stands really don't understand that all he is trying to do is do what the coach is telling oh, him to 100%. do. 100%. You know, I he's, mean, that's, he's yeah. jogging over the sideline right now, and Coach Lindsay's having a quick talk with him. First thing he's probably telling him is, hey, like, relax. It's all yeah, good. Like, right. this, you're doing exactly what I want you to do. There's no problem here. He's going to be like, go back out there and do this now, and, and we're going to see Podzielinski execute it exactly how he wants to. Now he is going to move off the hash mark and move it three yards in towards the center. And my guess, he's going to try that same exact mm -hmm. kick. Again, we've we got to use the, uh, the sidelines as an advantage, not uh, the... Uh, not the disadvantage. And if I remember correctly, Coach Lindsay was the kicker back when he played here at Lures, so that's just kicker to kicker talk is all that is. High end of her end kick, taken near the 25-yard line. That's Shannon with the ball going cross field. Now cuts it back, breaks one tackle, tries to get out of another, steps out of another. Now we've got a flag, gets it to the 50 into Bishop Lures territory. Two flags on the play. This is going to be holding against the Homestead Spartans back near the 40-yard line. Yeah, so a, a nice penalty there. Uh, tacked on if you're a Lures Knights fan. Uh, that time Podzielinski kicked it t kicked it square away, and it was going to be really good field position for Homestead as they got near the 50, but after the uh, block and the clipping call that we're about to see, it's going to put Homestead back in their own territory once again. So field position still in the Knights' favor. So for all that drama, uh, we are the Homestead Spartans uh, start back at their own 28-yard line. All right. Now, let's see. And it looks like Archbold is back on the field for the Homestead Spartans. So, again, we're going to see a lot more read options and probably a lot more quarterback running. That's mm -hmm. Is that going to do it? No. I think we had a timeout against, uh, called by Lures as maybe we had a personnel issue as 
maybe we're missing a, a cornerback out there for the Knights. And yeah, you get uh, Archbold back out there. You get the dual threat back. And yep. he really, he's thrown the ball really well so far tonight. So, yep. yep. Let's go down to Nick Gray. Nick, what do you have for us? Well, what I have, guys, a lot of action going on around the league. Uh, Southside ran a kickoff back for their, I think, first score of the season. Dwanger still leads that one 34 to 7, though. Uh, Snyder's beating Concordia 23 to 0. Carroll is uh, leading Northside 37 to 8. Northrop at Wayne, that's becoming quite the contest. Wayne's leading 35 to 28, but Northrop uh, doing well here in the second half. Columbia City's beating Belmont 42 to 19. New Haven to Cal tied at 21. Back up to you guys. Thank you very much, Nick Gray. We'll check in with Nick in the fourth quarter as well. And now here come the Homestead Spartans on offense with 41 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. First and 10 from their own 28-yard line. Quick throw, and it is batted. Nearly picked, or is it picked? No. Nope, ball hit the ground there. Nice job there by Kamari Harris making the play at the line of scrimmage from the defensive end position, getting that ball swatted, and nice effort there by number 12. Hedgecock, right? Yeah, Hedgecock comes flying in and tries to make a play. as a tough one to try to catch. He puts forth good effort. Second down now coming up for Homestead after a great play by Harris. Second and 10 now from the 28-yard line. And now they're going to move the ball back a little bit. Yeah, I was moved it up to the 29 for some reason. we got to keep them honest. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Twins right, twins left. Here's a snap. He looks left. He looks left. Steps up. He's going to run it. And he has got some daylight. He has got some room. Finally gets his uh, legs taken out from underneath him after a 10-yard run. So we're going to stop the clock here as the first down is given. So a first down there, nice job. That was not a designed run, but he tucked it down really quick and he knew that he saw a hole on the left side. So nice job there by Archbold to get the first down for the Spartans and try to get some momentum back. First and 10 for Homestead on the what could be the last play of the third quarter. Here's a snap, he looks to throw, looks to throw, looks right, going deep, going deep. Ball still got in him. the air, he's got him. Taylor's got it into Bishop Lewer's territory down near the 20 yard line. What a connection between Archbold to Taylor. Taylor had about 10-yard cushion before any Knights defender was anywhere near him. That ball seemed like it was up in the air forever, and it gave Gaston a chance to come over the top and make the, t the touchdown saving tackle. But a huge chunk play for Homestead, their second huge chunk play of the game. It gets them into just outside their red zone here as we near the end of the third. Ball resting right at the 21-yard uh, line, first and 10 for Homestead. Here's a snap, rolling left, rolling left. He's looking to throw, looks, fires into the flats, and it is caught by Little, but he is, he did not control it, and no good, out of bounds. And that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen, for your third quarter action. The final after three, 35-17, the Bishop Lures Knights on top of the Homestead Spartans with 12 minutes to play. Stick around, folks. We're back after one minute. This is SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Back to live action here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Homestead to start the fourth quarter on second and 10, just outside the red zone of Bishop Lures. Here's Archbold on a design draw, takes it right up the middle, goes outside, flag on the play. He goes in for a touchdown. That's going to come back. I think this one's coming back. And, and it is <laughs> holding against Homestead. And Archbold's going to be upset with that one. Yeah, and I can tell you right, right now, if I had a guess on who the hell hold was on i have a pretty good uh guess on it because there's one lineman out there who seems to be very unhappy about the yeah. call but that was another design run if, if 
you're the Knights, you got a break here, but you got to start thinking about making an adjustment, maybe have a linebacker spying Archibald. Yeah. yeah, Eric, what do you have for us? Well, if you're keeping track at home, folks, the score is one to one. Both teams have had a touchdown called back by penalty. <laughs> but guys, if you look at the score, 35-17, <laughs> Hard to imagine Homestead has only, has only managed one offensive touchdown through three quarters of play. Remember, they had a field goal and a kickoff return for a score. Their offense, despite getting in the red zone several times, has only scored once. Well, that's a great observation. Yeah, special teams accounting for 10 of those points. Here's a snap after the penalty. He's rolling left, looking downfield, has time, guns it, and it is overthrown, going for Kazai in the deep flats on a crossing route there, and no good. I'm not sure if Jake Archbold plays baseball, but um, if he doesn't, I recommend maybe pitching because that's the second ball I've seen him throw tonight that had some serious oh, heat yeah. on it. Yeah. And he does that thing where he rolls out, and they're doing a good job of rolling him out to his left. That's so much easier for a quarterback to roll to his left, set those shoulders, and he is really firing that ball down the field. Unfortunately, no Spartan receiver able to come up with it. Yeah, his technique on the rollout is, is tremendous. That's all there is to it. On third and forever now for Homestead. Archibald looks to throw down the middle, going on the seam route. It is up and caught, and that is Taylor with a catch, gets hit, still on his feet, trying to grind into the end zone, and he is taken down inside the five-yard line. Wow, a tremendous grab. Another uh, pass that was high-pointed by Taylor, brought it down, and now they're threatening. Yeah, this is one of those situations where you're trying to respect the arm and the speed of both Archbold and Trayvon Taylor. Both two Lures defenders were behind him and trying to not let him get beat, but instead of that, he comes underneath. First and goal from the five. They fake the jet sweep. Quarterback keeper dives into the end zone. Do we have the call? No. It's going to be second down. He did not get into the end zone. He's going to be just shy by about a yard. I'm shocked he didn't get in on that play. That was right. a pretty big hole, and he yeah. did the right thing, keeping the ball and trying to run straight up into it. But nice stand there by the Knights, and they're going to try to maybe make this a little difficult for the Spartans here, second and one. Second and one from the one, second and goal. From the shotgun, here's a snap. Get to the tailback, looking for something through the middle. Big push forward, touchdown. There's the call. There's the call. Big number, actually not big, number 26, Hardwick on the carry. He's 5'10", 170 yards. Punched his one in behind the, the big uglies up front for Homestead. Six more points on the board for the Spartans. Nice push there up front by Homestead and a good answer to a Lures touchdown. Coming back with a touchdown of their own. That's twice now they've answered a score at the score and trying to stay in this, but in order for it to really pay off, that defense has to find a way to get Lures off the field and they have to do it in a hurry. Yeah, and that was a signature drive for Taylor. The uh, the outstanding, uh, oh, the bad snap right here. They couldn't bring it down. Archibald looking to throw it into the corner up there. It's up for grabs and no good. So the PAT does not work out for the Homestead Spartans, and your score is now 35 to 23 with 10.50 remaining here in the fourth quarter. We'll step out for a 30-second break. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Welcome back to Lures Field, ladies and gentlemen. We've got an injury timeout on the far side of the field, back in the end zone there. Hopefully it's uh, just a temporary cramp. But uh, talking all fair with Eric Pete, our sideline reporter, great observation, Eric. What do you have for us? Well, guys, 35-23 is the score after that botched extra point. And that might come back to bite Homestead because they now trail by 12. If you're doing the math, that means they have to score two touchdowns now. If it had been 11, you could look at the field goal, the touchdown, the two-point conversion, but now they need to manage two more touchdowns in the last 10 minutes, 50 seconds. And oh, by the way, as Matt just pointed out, they've got to be keeping the Lures offense off the field as well. That's right, great point there, Eric. And it looks like uh, number seven again, that's uh, Dippold uh, making his way off the field. So he's been cramping up twice uh, tonight. So got to get that uh, young man some hydration mm -hmm. and we'll be uh, back at it right here. Well, again, fourth quarter action, ladies and gentlemen, as Eric just talked about, 35-23 to 23 is your score with 10.50 remaining. Homestead preparing to kick this one away from the 40-yard line. 
And Bishop Lures will take over after the kick. Just a reminder, folks, that H&L Electric is uh, one of our game sponsors. They're your full-service electrical contractor from commercial to industrial and residential. H&L Electric can handle the smallest to the largest of projects for your business or residence. Call Pete Henry at H&L Electric. All right, so the whistle blows, and we are getting ready for the Homestead kickoff. That's Colin Crandall, number 92, to boot this one away from the 40, from the middle of the field here. And it's a low one, and we've got a whistle, and this is probably going to be moved back. That's going to be a procedure penalty against Homestead. Homestead trying to go with a little bit of a squib kick there before the penalty was called, trying to keep it away from that back line of Bishop Lewis re uh, return men. Anything to try and uh, stop that good uh, field uh, advantage that they've enjoyed all night. Again, the short field really set up quite well by the special teams play of Bishop Lures throughout the entire contest so far. Homestead trying to battle it. Just as Bishop Lures was trying to keep the ball out of the hands of Cam Shannon. Uh, Turnaround is fair play. Yep. Or something like that. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here is the kick. Again, it's a low shib. Taken up front. Oh, it's no. touched. It's still, still wide. Loose. And it looks wow. like it is covered yeah. by Bishop Lewis. Kamari oh, Harris jumped heavens. on it. That was about as close to a perfect kick as you can get if you're a Homestead fan as that thing bounced right off the face mask of a frontline member of the Bishop Lewis Knights, which ma makes it a live ball. Kamari Harris does a good job heads-up play, sticking with it, jumping on it after he sees it squirt past that front line. So... Crisis averted if you're a Knights fan, and <laughs> now you right. take over and back to business. That's it. And short field. So, again, the ball is resting at the Bishop Lewis 48-yard line. They've got 52 yards to score and all kinds of time to do it. Let's see if, in fact, the Bishop Lewis Knights can put together a drive or if the Homestead defense will stiffen. The Knights break huddle and come to the line. Kanapke is in the shotgun with a single setback. Wide out on the far side is Gaston. Johnson, here's a snap. Give to Presley right through the middle. Finds nothing but a brick wall. Good tackle there by the Spartans, number 15. Looks like number 54 maybe got his bell rung. Or is that 56 by the Spartans? Tackles by Conrad Kazizi. A senior, nice job filling the hole and making the stick for the Spartans after no gain. One of the first times we've seen Jordan Presley stop at the line of scrimmage so far tonight. As it looks like we got everything back in order and ready to play some football. That might be Austin Layton making his way over to the uh, Homestead sidelines. He is a uh, senior defensive end. All right, second and ten now for Bishop Lewis. Here is the snap. He looks to throw, guns it to the flats. He's got Gaston, breaks one tackle, tries to get outside. Nice swarming defense by Homestead limiting that game, but still some good positive yards for Bishop Lures. Nice throw, nice catch there by Knapke to Gaston. And this is, you get in the situation now where when you're Homestead and you're the defensive coordinator, you have to pick one or the other. As, as we have maybe a quick timeout here as the officials want to take a, another measurement. Yep. As this is going to be a close one. But as I was saying, this is one of the situations where, okay, at that, that play, I think Homestead had, I think, six or seven guys in the box. So they're saying, we can't let them beat us on the run. So we're going to kind of give them the pass, and because of that, good pitch and catch there by the Knights, and they're able to make it third and short. Third and one, it looks like, from the stick. So a nine-yard gain by Gaston on the catch. Kanapke looks over to the sidelines, walks up under center, barks out a signal. Homestead adjusting on defense. Offset right now is Presley. Here's a snap. Give to Presley through the middle, looking for something. And I think he found a first down. Head down, body forward, momentum forward, pad level low to the ground. Jordan Presley able to just dive forward to get just enough to move those chains. And that clock just keeps on ticking. That's it. Ball is at the 41-yard line now. Into Homestead territory here in the fourth quarter. Lures taking their time now, using every bit of time on that play clock to grind it away. Clock now the enemy of Homestead. Two receivers left, one wide right. 
with a wing right. Give to Presley. Goes to the right side. Gets to the edge. Gets knocked out of bounds inside the 40 at about what looks to be about the 37. Fantastic block there by Sam Gerritsen, the right tackle for the Knights. He was able to set the edge and give Presley a chance to get around the corner and get upfield for a good gain here on first down. So now it's second and about, about five or six to go. Another opportunity for the Knights to just kind of keep pounding away at it. 9-14 remains in the contest. 35-23 to 23 is your score. Bishop Lures on top and driving. Kanapke in the shotgun. Has a single setback with him. Seven Spartans in the box here, trying to stop the run. Here's a snap, give to Presley, going right through the middle, trying to break it outside, find some more room. Gets into the linebacker core and finally taken down. He will be very close to a first down, but just shy. And now we've got another Spartan down, or slow to get up, actually. Looks like number 11 for the Spartans, Nick Martin. Last play was Sam Garrett's, and this play it's Will Derrick who gets my spotlight on that play because he came around that left side. And he's one of the best moving linemen I think Lures has on this roster as he's able to get up in the hole. He uses his quickness and his strength to kind of clear the way and let uh, Presley move his way towards the first down stick. Third and one for the Bishop Lures Knights. Here's a snap. Give to Presley. Left side. Oh, he swarmed over and stuffed. A huge defensive stop there by the Homestead Spartans. Homestead packed the box. They brought everybody. There was more defenders coming that the Knights could block. And because of that, Presley takes the loss. And it looks like you're in your own territory here. A punt really doesn't help you all that much. Uh, it's an interesting situation here. It, I, I think you just think you're better off maybe trying to go for it here. And that's what they're going to do. Fourth and five from the 37-yard line for Bishop Lures. Kanapke in the shotgun. He's got uh, three wide outs, two to the right side. Now he checks off, comes up to the line of scrimmage after looking at that defense. Single coverage at the bottom on Gaston, and Hedgecock at the top has single coverage as well. Yep. Now the safety starts to float over outside the, the uh, hash marks. And now a timeout as the play clock has expired. So Bishop Lures is going to talk about it on fourth and five here with 7.39 to go in the contest. Again, a reminder of your score, 35-23. Bishop Lures on top, a 12-point difference right here. As Eric Pete had mentioned before, that's 12 points. That's two touchdowns now that Homestead will have to make up. So, Matt, when we talk about the uh, the drive here for Bishop Lures, another first down is just another nail in the coffin without even scoring. Right. You know, just keeping the offense on the field and making that clock the enemy for a homestead is really a, a big success right now for Bishop Lures. Well, Sean, seven minutes is a lot of time left in this game. This is yeah. far from over, and especially if we just saw that last kickoff, how it bounced off the night helmet and almost fell into the, the arms of the Spartans, which would have, I mean, instantly flipped this entire game upside down. So any right. little play like that can happen. And we've seen from both sides, these teams can score in a hurry. It does not take long for them to get a deep play down the field and score touchdowns. So this fourth and five is a huge play. And I expect Homestead to come back to just about the same alignment. And this is this is one of those plays where if I'm Coach Stansky, I'm thinking, okay, I'm either going draw, I'm going to go rocket screen, or I'm going to get like every all my wide receivers about right to the sticks, turn around, bunch yep. of hitches, and see who can get open. Right. Get your playmakers in space and let them go to work. Let's see what happens here. Big down here for Bishop Lures. Two receivers on the right side, wing right and one left. Single setback, Kanapke from the shotgun. Here is the snap. He looks to throw, checks off, goes right into the flats, and incomplete off the mark. Looks like he might have been going for Johnson, who was double covered. Gaston was pretty much wide open mm -hmm. out here on the uh, on the deep flats. Well, the connection from uh. Kanapke to Johnson has been one that's been strong all night long, and that's the first time we've seen them kind of miscue on who was running what almost as if maybe there was a miscommunication as that ball was a good three yards behind Jay McJohnson who was running over the middle of the field and he was by no means open but we've seen him catch balls covered all day and you're right Gaston was just streaking down the right side of the yeah. field with nobody on him. All right here comes Homestead on offense first and ten in their own territory Archbold looks to throw he's got time all day all kinds of time looking 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 now rolls to the right still looking decides to run he's got some room he's at the 50 the 45 to 40 gets a block downfield and dropped at the 35 yard line. Archbold had all the time in the world and that's because the Knights only rushed three so they had uh, eight guys in coverage back and right when Archbold got to the second level, 
he was able to blow right by all the linebackers, and then he was open field. So using those, those feet of his for a big game. 30 yards that time for Archbold. Takes it into Bishop Lewis territory with a first and 10. Here's the snap. He rolls to his right, looking, throws into the flats, and incomplete that time. And a late flag coming in from the middle of the field in the back. And the back judge, I believe, is going to call a defensive pass interference. It's not very often you see the back judge make that call. He must have had a good angle on it to, to single it. And so Homestead gets another bail out there, and it's going to be a fresh set of downs. And now they are well into Lewis oh, territory. Oh, that's a 15-yarder. Yep. Wow. So they place the ball just north of the red zone at the 21-yard line. And another first down for Homestead. 7.09 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Oodles of time left for the Spartans. Here is a snap. Archibald looks up, fires right, and it's got a little screen. He's got his man. He is going, and he's still on his feet. That's Taylor with a huge catch down there, taken down inside the 10. Another night defender down on the field, and we're going to have a stoppage on the clock again as it's totally over on the other side of the field, yeah. so it's really yeah. hard to get a number at the moment. We could do the process of elimination, but we'll wait and see until he gets up. Looks like Eric might have something for yeah, us. Yeah, let's uh, go down on the sidelines and check in with Eric Pete. Well, right now I'm just kind of marveling at uh, the play of Trevon Taylor uh, in this game. Anyone who thought his production would take a dip this year after the graduation of Jaya Wright uh, they were dead wrong. Last week he had 140 yards, two scores. Today again, he's been riddling the Lures defense all night long. Yeah, he surely has. And uh, his abilities, Eric, I mean, he can stretch, he can high point, and um, and he's really pulling down those fast balls right out of the air. I'm, I'm really impressed with this kid's athletic abilities. Yeah, we were, we're lucky enough tonight to see two uh, Player of the Year candidates who they actually the two finalists for Player of the Year. Uh, face off against each other with Kamara Harris and Trayvon Taylor, and they've both shown why they are deserving of that accolade. And uh, Trayvon Taylor had that one drop in the first half, but since then he has been uh, just a beast out there on the yeah, field. Yeah, he surely has. And uh, we still have a night down on the far side of the field as both teams, uh, the Knights, have taken a knee here on the sidelines and uh, timeout on the field. So we're going to go ahead and step out for a little 30-second break ourselves. Stick around, folks. This is fourth quarter action. We've got 7.02 remaining. The uh, Homestead Spartans are threatening to score. And uh, the score is 35-23 to 23 here in the fourth quarter. Corners are running. Play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business. It's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana and beyond. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome back to live coverage here of the Battle between the Bishop Lewis Knights and the Homestead Spartans. This is fourth quarter action right now. There is a timeout on the field. It's an injury timeout. We've got a knight on the far side of the field that is down, being attended to by three or four different uh, trainers and medical staff right here. 35-23 is your score with 7.02 remaining. And uh, just a reminder for you guys uh, listening on 106.3 and around the world at RedeemerRadio.com that next week we will be live again with the Homestead Spartans as they take on the Bishop Winger Saints from Homestead High School. We will uh, have tailgate talk at 6 p.m., followed by our Game of the Week coverage, typically going live around 6.55. So please keep it all right here on Redeemer Radio for all your football coverage. And um, we uh, really will be excited to cover the uh, Homestead Spartans as they go up against the, the Bishop Winger Saints. That yeah. In my mind, Matt, you know, I know it's early and just pontificating here, but that could be uh, an early look at the SAC championship. Absolutely. You look yeah. up and down the SAC, and I, I f firmly believe it's going to be a one, maybe even a two-loss team that wins yeah. the Bell this year. And, I mean, what an opportunity both these schools are going to have next week to really catapult themselves up to the top of the standings and really kind of say, you know what, we're the team to beat. Like, we're, we're, we're setting the tone, and we're the ones that you have to come find. That's right, King of the Hill week. Yeah, could very well be next week. 
Uh, right now, just hearing from uh, Eric down on the sidelines, uh, Justin Gaston is the down night right now, uh, which is a huge, uh, huge blow uh, for these nights. And, and now both teams are actually coming off the field uh, as Gaston is still getting attended to and a golf cart is coming over in that vicinity. So, again, our thoughts and prayers uh, going out to Justin. And uh, we know he's in excellent care right now. The, mm -hmm. the staffs here uh, both from both sidelines are out there uh, looking him over and um, and taking good care of him as best we possibly can here on the field. So <coughs> we'll, uh, we'll keep you informed of that. Uh, right now we're going to go ahead and uh, step out for a little one-minute break right here and, um, and ask our, our listeners at home, to, uh, to keep your thoughts and prayers fixed with uh, Justin Gaston um, and uh, where he's at right now out on the field. So stick around, folks. This is SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. I mean, I always had my family behind me. I always had my team behind me. But to have staff that wanted the best for me and to get me feeling better the quickest was really reassuring. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana and beyond. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Eric Pete, who might have a little better look for us down there. Eric, is, is yeah. he on the cart? Is he? Yes, he, he is on the cart. Uh, he actually was able to stand up with their help uh, sure. and walk over and sit down under his own power. So that's a great sign. It's a great sign. Yeah. Um, he's not showing much emotion on his face. Uh, I don't know if this is a head injury, concussion type of situation, um, but he has not shown much expression. And uh, they're being very careful with him and, and talking to him very closely. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, he has made his way over to the golf cart. The teams are now back out onto the field, clearly not even ready to uh, to blow a whistle at this point. Uh, again, they are just, uh, you know, trying to get back into some type of rhythm um, and resetting from the press box up here. 702 remaining in the contest. 35 to 23 is the score. Bishop Lewers on top. And we hear some clapping coming from the, the fans here as the golf cart with Mr. Gaston makes his way back out onto the track on the far side of the field. And he will further get, uh, get further medical attention from the training staff and medical staff here at Bishop Lures. So, um, and a great gesture from the Homestead faithful on the far side yeah. as they stand and applaud as he makes his way across in the golf cart there. So, all right, looks like we are ready to go here. 
And it is going to be first and goal from the five-yard line for Homestead. As Archbold is in the shotgun, here's a snap, and it's a quick hit. No, quarterback keeper tries his way through the middle, and he will be shy of the goal line. Looks like he's going to get uh, back to the line of scrimmage. Not a whole lot more there. Nice job there by Will Derrick to come into the backfield and make the play for the Knights. He's been really good on that defensive tackle position all night long. And the more downs it takes Homestead to score here, the more time that goes off that clock as the Knights are trying to dig in here and come out with the victory. Second, and we'll call it four at this point from the shotgun. Again, a read option. Quarterback keeper dances in and touchdown Homestead. No flags on the field as Archibald trots in from four yards out. That dual threat of Archibald showing once again, and he's been a spark the second half when he came in back into the game as the Knights have been unable to really crawl him. He had the big scramble to get down to, the, to their side of the field and into the red zone, and a nice job there to put some points on the board and get even closer in this game. So 35-29 is your score. Now will they try and kick one? One would assume that they will, of course. I mean, Crandall looks like he is out there. And now we've got a Homestead Spartan down near the five-yard line. Don't know if it was a big hit or a cramp or really don't know much of anything right now. But once again, the, uh, the Bishop Lures Knights starting to slowly amble over towards the sidelines here. And it looks like uh, the young man is sitting up. Inside the five. Can't really get a number on him yet at this point. Mm -mm. Gets to his knees, gets stood up, and will make his way off the field. Looks like his number is 72 for the Spartans. That's um, Evan Query. He is a senior, 5'10", 240. He's a defensive lineman on the chart. Also a right tackle. And right tackle, yeah. Excuse me, right guard. So the PAT team now comes in for Homestead. The whistle blows. Crandall preparing to boot this one through. Here is the snap. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it looks good from here, and it is. So another point on the board. 35-31 now is your score. Check that. With 6.18 remaining here in the contest, we're going to step out for a 30-second break. You're listening to Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. That was ugly. Is it 30 or 31? It's 30, right? All right. Yeah. So we're down by 12, 7, yep. 5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. God bless. It's getting late early. What time is it? <laughs> yeah. We are back to live action in the waning moments of this contest here, and it's getting late. I don't know that it's cooled down at all. Uh, <laughs> 6 18 here, remaining out of Lewis Field. The Homestead Spartans uh, are gaining momentum mm -hmm. and pushing. And really driving Bishop Lures back. They've just scored a touchdown, and the score is now 35-30 to 30 with 6.18 remaining. They're getting ready to kick the ball away. And could this be, again, deja vu all over again? Last week, they were down 20-3 to 3 at half against Concordia and came back with a big win. Can they do the same against these Bishop Lures Knights? Let's find out. The game is far from over. <laughs> The far sidelines are on their feet. The near sidelines are on their feet. Let's see what happens here on the kick. And it's a low ship kick and taken by an up back from Bishop Lewers, covered up near the 35-yard line. And that's where Bishop Lewers will take over. First and 10, minus one, Justin Gaston. Yeah, so you're out without one of your top wide receivers and one of your top playmakers from the slot position. And so... You have to rely on Jordan Presley in the backfield. You got Jay McJohnson on the outside and Cameron Hedgecock, who also has made plays in this game. And then the name we haven't called yet, but he's had big games in the past, being Mr. Moore. So there's opportunities here 
for the Knights to kind of chew away at this clock. And if I'm Coach Brent X, the offensive line coach for the Knights, and Coach Ryan Palmer, it's all about getting this offensive line moving forward, making up holes, and putting this game on their back and carrying them to a victory. Rick Tannis and company are at the line. Kanapke in the shotgun. Here's a snap. Get to the tailback. That's Presley around the left side, hitting the backfield and dropped. Not much of a gain, maybe even a loss on that play. It's going to be interesting how the Knights find a way to really gain yards right now because Homestead is just, is, they're laying their hand out on the table and they're saying, this is what we're going to do. You have to beat us. And what they're doing is they are, they are sucking in the defensive end. They're putting more linebackers in the box and they're saying, you must throw the ball if you're going to beat yep. us. We saw in the third quarter that uh, Bishop Lures was getting the edge. Right. Matt, and, and, you know, they're not right now. Nope. Um, so no gain on the play. Second and 10. Here's Kanapke on oh, the snap. Botch play. Oh, botch play was not ready, and that is going to be a sack. He tried to roll left to try and make something happen, and he is going to be dropped back at the 30. I think that was a situation where they weren't ready to snap the ball, but the ball was snapped. You know how the Knights, they come up to the line sometimes, and they fake a hard count, and then they look to their sideline to get the play after they see what Homestead's running. Yep. Well, when they did that fake hard count, the ball was snapped, and then Kanaki had nowhere to go. So now it's third and a mile, and the Knights are firmly on their heels. We'll call that third and 16 for the Knights. Ball racing back at their own 30-yard line. Have the wheels come off? Let's find out. Here's a snap. Kanapke looks to throw. Looks to throw. He's got time. Airs it into the flats. Thrown behind Johnson and incomplete. Good job there by the Homestead defense with a little help from the Lures Knight offense. A three and out and quickly... The ball is going to be kicked back to an offense that has shown in the fourth quarter they can't be stopped. And now this gets really interesting, Sean. Yeah, it surely does. Yep, that's exactly right. So the punt team comes on for the Bishop Lures Knights. And good field position. Uh, could very well be on tap for Homestead as Ben Jennings gets ready to launch this one to big number 10, Cam Shannon. Low snap, he has to, f oh, he gets it away somehow. And it was a good kick, takes a lures bounce. Shannon's got it off the hop, trying to get outside. He's getting pursued, breaks a tackle. The 30, the 35, the 40. He's back at midfield, tries to get out of it, and dropped in Bishop Lures territory. So the lures bounce goes right into the hands of number 10 for the Spartans, which is Cameron Shannon. And he's able to get to the outside and breaks a couple wimpy arm tackles by the Knights. And now, all game, it's been lures, field position, lures, field position. Well, momentum has changed, and now field position has changed, and Homestead has a great chance here. A 25-yard return by Shannon sets up the Homestead Spartans first and 10 at the lures 45-yard line. Archbold. Quarterback draw through the middle, breaks it outside to the right side. He's still on his feet. He's got five. He's got ten. He's got more and runs out of bounds with a first down under his belt. This is turning to the Jake Archbold show here yeah. in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter. And he's not really doing anything all that fancy. He's He takes one step back. He looks at one wide receiver, and then, boom, he's tucking it, and he's a running back. And that's what he does. He takes off running. Yeah. The Knights have to find a way to either spy him, get somebody on him, or you have to tell your defense alignment to not go flying up the field so fast. But either way, it's all Archibald right now. Yeah. Looks to be about a gain of 12, maybe 13 on that one for Archibald. First and 10 again. Here's a, a give up the middle. This time he does hand it off, and it is successful. Gets inside the 30, close to the 25-yard line. And that's going to bring up a second and short for Homestead. And now we've got another injury on the field. They stop the clock with 4-13 remaining here in the fourth quarter. 35-30 to 30 is your score. Lures on top, but Homestead driving. Crazy how quickly games can turn upside down, Sean, as it goes from the Knights who are the clocks on their side. You know, yeah. they're just trying to tick away, tick away at it, trying to get some first downs and move it. And now it completely flips. And if you're Homestead, you got all the time in the world. And really, you're in no rush to score here because you are have shown so far in the fourth quarter, whatever you run works. That's so right. you can yeah. take as much time as you want and try to get that ball in the end zone and take the lead. And, and really, you don't, want to, you don't want to score too fast. Right. You know, that's all there is to it. So right. Jacob Krieger makes his way off uh, of the field. He'll take a one playoff, maybe two. Looks like he's got a little limp, maybe cramping right now. Yep. 
Krieger, one of the DNs for uh, Bishop Lures, impact player. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a position you can't really lose right now because at the defensive end position, that's where Archibald's really making his money at the moment. Right. He's getting to that outside and he's beating the contain to the edge. Second and three coming up for Homestead. Here's a snap. Read option, quarterback right through the middle. He's got the first down and more. Gets inside the gets inside the 25. It looks like down to the 20, maybe the 19. Another read option where quarterback Archbold either has the opportunity to hand it off to the running back who's going to go outside or he can keep it himself and go up the middle. And it's amazing how many times he's calling his own number. Yeah. He's just, he's he's putting just the game grinding on his away. Back. Yeah. He really is. Yeah. First and 10 from the 19. Homestead inside the red zone now with 335 remaining in the contest. On first down, here's Archbold from the shotgun. Another read option, breaking it. And that is number 26 on the carry. He's going to fall forward. Not much there as they were able to contain him. So they go Will Derrick's way once again, and he answers the call and is able to get by his offensive lineman and make the stick in the backfield. A nice outside-inside move where he took one step with his left foot to the outside, came back to the inside, and was there to meet the running back at the line of scrimmage. Now second and long, that's a little bit of success, and yeah. you have to build off of this now. You got a little bit of success, let's get another play. Let's just string them together if you're a Lures defenseman. Hardwick on the carry that time for one-yard gain. And now we've got a timeout on the field called by whom? That would be Homestead. Takes a break. So we're going to take a break as well. It is fourth quarter action. There's 254 remaining. The score is 35-30. to 30. Bishop Lewers on top of Homestead, who is driving with a second and nine when we come back after this 30-second break. Stick around. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. We're treating injuries when and where they happen and working to prevent them before they do. We believe the best care is coordinated care, helping ensure you get the individualized services you need every step of the way, offering innovative treatment techniques to get you or the athlete you love back in play. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience. Chargers by one point, 21 to 20. Right now, they're clinging to a five point lead with Homestead driving inside the red zone, second and nine from the 18. Let's see what happens here after the timeout. Archbold from the shotgun, looks to throw. He's got pressure, breaks out, goes to the right side. He's got pressure. Oh, he breaks another. He's got the first down, jumps for the end zone. I uh, think he's, he's short. He's down, he's at the one. Yep, he's at the one. He's at the one. So a 17-yard scamper by Archbold and a new first and goal for the Homestead Spartans. I don't know if he dabbles in magic, but I think like four <laughs> times on that on that run, I thought he was tackled. And the next thing you know, I just see his head yep. floating towards the far yeah. corner. He is amazing. He's just a monster. Yeah. And let's see. I don't. I think. I think they put him at the three. Actually, so, so he must have stepped yeah. out before he, yeah. he he dove for the pylon. He knocked yeah. the pylon over, but he must have stepped out early. So here we go. First and goal from the three yard line off the fifteen yard scamper, and again quarterback keeper through the middle. He dives for it. He gets it. Homestead with a touchdown. Six points on the board. They take the lead with two thirty four remaining here in the contest. Thirty six to thirty five. All right, Coach Matt, will you go for two here? Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I would go for two. One, sure. one doesn't help you. Uh, two at least makes a field goal only tie you. That's um, right. I'm not a great math guy, but I'm pretty sure those <laughs> well, num pretty sure those numbers check out. Right. If you do this correctly, a field goal for Lures can't win. Right. And that's what you're going for here. So. And um, if I'm a genius play caller I'm giving the ball to Archbold I'm saying right. you can just go do whatever you want exactly and see if you can score I'm guessing it's going to be another read option yeah. here and let's see what they do mm -hmm. they're going for two he flows to the right side he looks the pass he's back deep now he goes opposite field lofts it up and it's going to be picked off yeah so you can't return that so just a nice play by the defense so now it gives you a chance and uh, all you got to do is get down the field goal range and give your kicker an opportunity and 
Carter Drake has been good all year long for the Knights. He's yet to miss on a PAT, and he has attempted an, a field goal as well, and that one was good too. So it's not um, out of the question that you can put something together, but you got to find some kind of life because right now nothing is going your way. That's right, yeah. I want to check in with Eric Pete down there and, uh, and get his take on that play call, uh, but I see him running across yeah. the field right now. <laughs> okay, Eric. What uh, what do you think of that play call there? Well, on the uh, two point conversion, you mean? Yeah. I don't know. I think if anything, they were trying to catch the Knights off guard, yeah. thinking the Knights were assuming another uh, read option run by Archbold. But guys, it's amazing to watch Archbold, and, and especially if you consider the fact he was not even their closer last week right. in their win against Concordia. They had Goody in the game. I mean, if anything, what an embarrassment of riches for Homestead having two quarterbacks both capable of carrying the load and taking this team to the promised land. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of Carroll, you know, a few years ago when they yeah. had Miller, you know, and and, um, and I, the other young man, his name escapes me right now, but but no, you nailed it right there. Talk about an, an embarrassment of riches. What, what talent do I put in where? You know, wow, what a happy problem to have. So, let's recap. 36-35 is your score with 234 remaining. Homestead preparing to kick this one away. From the 40, it's a low one on the ground, picked up by an up back for Bishop Lures, covered up, and he's going to be dropped for no return that time. That was number 13, Scotty Van Hindegam. Scotty covers it up north of the 30, looks to be about the 33 yard line. So Kanapke and company are going to have to run a pretty good two-minute drill here, yep. uh, if nothing else, to get down to field goal range as they're down mm -hmm. by one with 2.32 to go. Timeouts, I think Bishop Lures has two remaining, right? I think, I, I it's, think two. it's two. Yeah. Huge opportunity here. You, no Justin Gaston out on the field. Right. So you lose one of your top weapons on the outside. Mm -hmm. You have Josh Dippold, who has been shown that he can make plays. Jay McJohnson is a highlight reel waiting to happen. You got Jordan Presley in the backfield. So there's opportunities here, and you don't need it all on one play, but you have to find success early in the downs. Here's a snap. He's got all day. Rolls to the right, throws. He's got his man. That's Johnson, who gets thrown out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line. That's a, just a great play call. You had Johnson coming all the way across the field with defenders at his back. A nice throw there by Kanapi. Good poise to stay in the pocket and deliver a nice ball. And Johnson gets out of bounds. So now the clock stops. You reset the offense. And here we go again. Number to watch, top of the screen, Cameron Hedgecock. He's yep. shown all game on that he can get a step on that cornerback. Let's see if he can beat him. On second and four, coming up for Bishop Lures. Here's a snap. Kanapke looks to throw, throws, and it is caught. Johnson again in the flats on the left side. He's going to be shy of the first down. Does not get out of bounds, so the clock continues to tick down. That's going to bring up a third and two with 2.10 remaining. Knights run this no-huddle offense all game long, and they've done it all season long, so this is nothing different for them. It's just business as usual, but now you have to think, okay, first and foremost, I need a first down here. i got to keep this drive alive. Yep. It's four down territory, and here we go, third down. From the shotgun, single setback. Kanapke looks to throw on third. Looks, looks, looks. All Goes day. deep, deep, deep left. Double Hedgecock. coverage and nearly picked. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. Do we have a flag? We do. We've got holding against Homestead. Homestead. Oh, my. I don't... Sean, hey, Eric, if you, where is the flag at? Did you happen to see where that flag was thrown? Was it in the secondary? I think, is, is that right there okay. in the middle of the field there? Yep, yep. Okay, I see okay. it now. So, yeah. so so it was a defensive back down the field holding somebody. I don't think it was the, the uh, I don't think it was a hold on Hedgecock who was running down the field. He had four guys on him. He's lucky that ball fell incomplete, but the Knights get a break here. They get a first down. They move to midfield as the clock stops now, and they have a fresh set of downs. Ball is at the 49-yard line of home dead now they take their time play clock down to 14 lots of time here first and 10 for the Knights Johnson in the slot bottom of the screen here here's a snap quick hitter and it's a screen over oh, the middle that's Hedgecock screen. gets close to the stick near the middle of the field it's going to be real close. It's going to bring up second and a yard with 130 remaining in the contest. Nice rocket screen to the left side for Hedgecock to come back. He had all the offensive line in front of him, and they are moving down the field. 
from just outside the 40. He's looking to throw. Goes deep left side. And does he have his man? It is caught. They stop the clock. Gets out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. That's Hedgecock again. That's back-to-back. -back. Really good plays. After he made a nice heads-up play, making sure the Homestead didn't pick off the pass. And he back-to-back -back catches. And now we're getting close to field goal range for Carter Drake, who already has a 29-yarder on the season. Ball is resting at the 30-yard line. Fresh set of downs for Bishop Lures. Time is of the essence. Just over a minute to go. They're down by one. Here's a snap. He looks to throw. Pressure coming. Yep, he steps up. Throws on the run. Left side. Got and him. it is Hedgecock again. Catch that? No. Oh, it's complete. It. Oh, my Whoa. goodness. He goes horizontal and can't come up with it. Incredible effort there on the left side by Cameron Hedgecock. As Kanaki does a great job stepping up in the pocket and buying himself some extra time. Homestead that time, instead of rushing three, they did bring a linebacker. Nice heads up blocking there by number 23 for the Knights. The running back, Contrell Ash Jr., to pick up the blitz. Hedgecock almost had that ball, but... Homestead lives to see another down, they second down. They stop the clock at 52.3 seconds, second and 10 now for Bishop Lures. These Knights fans are antsy, but the players and the coaches are trying to get them to stay quiet because with this no huddle offense, you got to be able to hear the play from the sideline. From the shotgun, here's Kanapke on second and 10. Looks to throw. Pressure comes, rolls to the right, throws to the right, goes down for it. I hear a whistle. Is it caught? And a flag comes out. Late flag comes out. Looks like we have a little bit of a scrum here. Eric, to... Eric, what do you see down there? I think this flag is going to go against Homestead. They tackled him just short of the sideline, so he couldn't get out of bounds. But the Homestead defender stayed on top yeah. of him, held yep. him down as the Lures player was flailing his arms. Yeah, trying to get up. Exactly. Yep. I he gotcha. was not able to. See, that's an interesting point wow. there, Eric. Nice job seeing that down there. That's something that you see like late in the game with like five, four, three seconds left. Sure. You try not to let him snap another play. There's so much time left that you can't do that. You got to let the player get up. All right, so let's see. That's a big 15-yard penalty. It's a 26-yard line. This will put them in field goal range after the walk-off. So it's technically it's a delay game because you're not allowing right. the offense yeah. to get back to the line of scrimmage. So the catch was good, and mm -hmm. they moved the ball down to the 21-yard line. Free, free stoppage of the clock, too, on the penalty, right. yep. which that helps you save a timeout as well. 46 seconds remaining. Second and a long one now coming up for Bishop Lures. The ball just outside the red zone at the 21-yard line. Coach Lindsay really giving a talking to the side judge here. Now the officials, the white hat. We were at, in the if, yeah. If I had to guess, this discussion goes from, okay, was this a delay game or was this a personal foul? Right. Because that's, that's, that's a 10-yard difference, and now we're going to have – and also it could be a clock. Yeah, there yeah, might this be is, one this is to reset the clock. Yeah, he's got to come over and tell Coach Lindsay. That way he can radio up to his coaching staff on how much, clock to put, how much time to put back on the clock. If, in fact, that's the discussion. Let's see. What is being said? Yeah, Coach Lindsay on his headset now. They're taking time off the clock? I think we're going to check and make sure this is correct. From 46, they're taking it down to 39? It, ooh. Yeah, he seems to be okay with it. So, yep. Okay. 39 to go. Here we go. Kanapke at quarterback. Here we go. On third and one. Kanapke in the shotgun. Two wideouts on the left side. Blitz coming. Here's a throw. Tipped and incomplete that time. He was going for Johnson. Somebody got a paw on it and deflected the pass. Okay, so you have timeouts left. Now you need a yard to keep the drive alive, or do you kick it at this, at this moment? It's a long way for kicker Carter Drake. Check that again, Eric. What, did you say third down? Yeah, the scoreboard says third and one. Okay. And okay, the, so uh, the chain was wrong. The chain I believe was wrong. So. Okay. All right. So now we have third down. Signaling third, one signaling fourth. I don't think they know what's going on. The, the marker at the first down line says third down at the moment. 
Let's go with that. Boy, that's confusing. Heat coming. Here's a give to Presley. Right got side. Room. He's got the first down and then some inside the 20. Ball was on the ground. No, they're whistling yep, him, down. him down. Probably going to need to take a timeout here if you're the Knights. Clock's, and they do. Clock stops to move the chains. Now let's see if, in fact, they're going to call an additional timeout here. Just it, it's, it's getting close to utter chaos down there on That's the That's right. It is. Now they wind the clock. 27 seconds. First and 10 for the Knights. Taking a lot of time here. Give to Presley through the middle. Breaks it outside. Gets down to about the 12-yard line. And now he's going to run it down. 10 seconds remaining. 9, 8, eight. 7, he, He's six. going for one more play. That's right. He's going he's gonna to go for the field goal. Okay. So. Uh, yep. 3.4 seconds remaining on the clock. Timeout by Bishop Lures. So the Knights do their job. They get down into field goal range, and they put it on the shoulders of Carter Drake. He's 10 of 10 from PAT on the year. He's 1 of 1 with field goals. He made a 29-yarder, which came last week at Wayne. And this should be roughly another 29-yarder, if I'm doing the math right. If the ball is at the... Oh, wait a minute. Is the ball at the 12 or the 17? Looks like the ball is at the 12-yard line. Okay. All right. So 22 plus 7. Sounds about 29 to me. So let's see what he does. Yep. They're teeing it up at the 19. Here we go for the game. 3.4 seconds. And now we've got a timeout. I'm sure they're going to try and ice him. Yep. That's exactly what they do. So Homestead calls a timeout. Your score, 35 to 36. Bishop Lures down by one. It's up to the kicker. Mm -hmm. Number 29 for Bishop Lures to win this game for them with 3.4 seconds remaining on the game clock. Equal amount of pressure on the holder, Josh Dippold. He's had two snaps already tonight where he had to reach behind him, catch it, put it down. He's a wide receiver. He plays defensive back. He's got some of the best hands on the team. And... So I'm sure they're confident with him, but it's just as important to get the snap, get the hold, and get the kick and block up front because Homestead's going to bring everybody. What do you have real fast for us, Eric? Hey, do you guys have a pulse up there or what? <laughs> man, oh, man. I know it. What it a is, high school football It game. is crazy. We, we know how to pick them here at Redeemer Radio. Tell you what. All right, here we go. The timeout is over. Everything has to go off without a hitch. Hendricks is the snapper, dippled the holder, Drake the kicker. Drake is a junior. Here's a snap, the kick, it is up. It looks good from here. Oh yeah, that's dead center. It is, it is. The kick is up and good. The game is over, no more clock. 38 to 36, the Knights win on the last play of the game. Carter Drake is your hero, ladies and gentlemen. Number 29, the junior kicker is money tonight. And the Knights come out with a victory here at home. Both teams make their way to the middle. They have left everything out on the field tonight, Matt, and what a match it has been. I mean, there's nothing left that I wanted to see tonight. I mean, I saw <laughs> offense, I saw defense, I saw questionable calls, I saw great plays, and then it all comes down to the kicker, and there's not, he's on an island. There's, there's yeah. not a more lonely feeling out on the field than, but the right the right guys the, the guys with the right personality they live they just dream for that moment to put it through the uprights and he comes through with a beautiful kick to send the knights two to one two and one that's right we're going to see if eric has some time to get a hold of coach Lindsay and see if he still has a pulse as well after he makes his way through the uh, the line there at middle at the middle of the field so the bishop lures knights hand the homestead spartans their first loss of 2018 here at home at bishop lures field and the Knights will go up to 2-1 and one and have the same record as Homestead. So, uh, what, what a game. This is what high school football is all about, Matt. You called it. This had everything. Uh, intrigue, power, speed, uh, finesse. 
and it comes down to a junior kicker to win it yeah. for the Bishop Lures Knights. I, I think this Knights team tonight just showed a lot of moxie. They showed a lot of confidence, and they showed resiliency because it was everything was going right and then it just came to a halting stop and it's so hard as a player to find a way to get those wheels turning again and get moving in the right direction coach Dansky had, did a great job on the play calling there down the stretch in that last drive and the the poise by Norm, Norman Kanapke to just survey the field call the play keep everybody calm and it's just from top to bottom fantastic job that's exactly right so the Bishop Lures Knights come over. The student section has cleared. They are now on the sidelines cheering on the Knights. A tremendous victory here at Lures Field for the Knights. And we are going to try and get uh, our man Eric Pete in with Coach Lindsay, who hopefully is still able to walk and talk. <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. What do you got? Jump! Jump! Hey, we're here with Coach Lindsay after the win, 38-36. How's your heart feeling right now, Coach? <laughs> Uh, surprisingly pretty calm there um you know first of all that's a heck of an effort that, that that team over there they got a they got hearts of champions um you know we're down literally down to the last available guys that really could play varsity football um and we had to grit it out uh i guess the team that had done this thing, same thing a week ago um you know I, I thought norm did a heck of a job keeping composure offensive line a good job keeping their composure um, and then what can you say I mean uh, Carter Drake uh, same exact spot he hit it last week in the fourth quarter to, to make it a 28-24 ball game just drilled it right down the middle I mean I, I looked out I had a smile on his face before he kicked that so uh, I had a lot of confidence there what does it say about your team you guys were up by three scores when the fourth quarter began to give those three touchdowns away and then still have the composure to put that game-winning drive together uh, this is a team that's shown a lot of maturity from a year ago. Um, you know, I think a year ago in the same scenario, I'm not sure we win that ball game. Uh, we've had some uh, juniors turn into seniors really grown up, um, and that's across the board. I don't think anybody believed that game was over. Um, nobody really hung their head there, um, and if, if they did, I heard a lot of people picking each other up. So uh, it says a lot about the character of this team, and um, you know, we'll obviously we'll enjoy this tonight, this weekend, long weekend, and uh, get back at it because we got another tough one in a week. That's the way this conference goes. First ever win over Homestead for Bishop Lures. What does that mean to the program? I think it's the first one since 1982. At least I went back in the record book, unless I read that wrong. I'll, I'll trust you on that one. Uh, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, no, it's at least the first win in 35, 36 years. Um, you know, that, that's just... I think a, a couple years ago, we were knocking on the door. Um, you know, I just couldn't be prouder of the kids. They put in a heck of a week of, uh, of practice. Um, it was just our best week of the year, best week probably in a couple years. Um, so it's good to see it pay off. And um, it just, I guess it wouldn't have been right if we just ran away with it in the fourth quarter there. So we really tested our mettle and uh, couldn't be prouder. Well, you made it one heck of a game for us to broadcast. So we appreciate you keeping us busy there. I can, ima I can imagine. <laughs> I can't remember the last time we had a uh, Game-winning field goal at the at the buzzer. Yeah. Oh, I see. I don't. I have to ask my dad on that one. I mean, yeah. It's been decades, I imagine. Well, congrats on the win. Thank you. Appreciate All it. Right. Sean, back to you. All right. Thanks very much, Eric. Always great to talk to Coach after a big victory like that, and what a victory it was. Uh, again, just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, 38-36 is your final here from Lewis Field, and uh, they're getting ready to shut down the uh, the press box <laughs> yeah. here, man. So they're we're, we're going to have to go. That's right. They're kicking us out. want to say some very special thanks. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get to the uh, the final stats or a check-in with Nick Gray either. Um, but again, very special thanks to our broadcast crew. Mary and Caroline Poinsett back at the station keeping us on the air all night. Special thanks to those two back there on the field tonight we had our sideline reporter eric pete our associate executive assistant producer is nick gray up in the booth on stats charlie mcbride for young matt geely i'm sean mcbride wishing you all a good night may god bless you and we'll see you on the sidelines this is redeemer radio 106.3 fm when you experience a sports injury muscle or joint pain you want treatment right away Parkview Ortho Express provides same-day orthopedic and sports injury care without referral or appointment, offering diagnostics, x-rays, the region's only body composition DEXA scan right inside of the Sport 1 Parkview Fieldhouse. Walk in Monday through Thursday, 7 to 7, Friday, 7 to 5, and Saturday, 8 to noon. For more information, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash orthoexpress.
It's the comments. Comments falling from the sky. 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 This is the first time I've been able to do this kind of more uh, complete understanding or view of your body. One of the things that's really important about this is that it's kind of legitimizing us as athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Concussions. They're a concern for parents of athletes in any sport. That's why Parkview Sports Medicine is leading the way with the area's first concussion clinic. Our integrated sports medicine team utilizes an innovative, evidence-based approach to manage athletic-related head injuries in those 14 and older, providing comprehensive care to get the athlete you love safely back in play. To schedule an appointment, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 266-4007. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne Mad Ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's the... Uh... to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ants in action. Get mad about blue. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far, so they're setting you up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing, and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education, but also the experience. Parkview Sports Medicine, especially since I've been a pro, has been a place where my game has really been able to develop in multiple facets. Injury prevention, maintenance, physical therapy, weightlifting, agility work, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to have an NBA body. This is the place for me to go when I come back home and I need to get a workout in. Always welcome me back with open arms. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Both runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana and beyond. Support Summit City Sports, become a sponsor, join our winning team today.